Welcome, everybody, to Crunch. With Jeff, Booner, Lucas, and Mike, it's Friday, March 22nd. And today, we're doing our first ever full first-round mock draft. Wow. Let's go, baby. March 4. Get it. We're going to have alternating picks. That'll be fun. We're going to go through J.D. McCarthy, Michigan Pro Day. Huh? Come on, Boone. Look good. He was slinging it. All right, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Xavier, Xavier Howard. He came out. He said he'll take less money to join a contender. We'll talk about that in the second hour. And we'll also, it's Fan Mock Draft Friday. The old Lions fans submitted their mock draft. We got a handful of them. We're going to preview and show off. We're going to grade them. And the chat will participate as well. The boys, how are we feeling on this Friday? Feel good Friday. Feel hey, good Friday. Wow. It's a great you know, like college the, basketball uh, all day. What do you say, Gentry? I said I've been great watching college basketball all day with the boys. Been great. <laughs> Virtually, I was going to but... ask. Did, um, I had to head up back to Detroit. Who won the FAU and Northwestern game? Northwestern, the dogs. Never a doubt. Damn. The dogs. Damn. Never, Never a doubt. Damn, damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. The, how's everyone's bracket? You guys check your bracket. How's everyone's bracket? Mine shot. Mine is yeah, mine. shot. Absolutely I mean, most people. Shredded. I think there's like ten perfect brackets left. I, I think, or uh, yeah, I think that's the number, like 10 out of like 20 plus million. So, I mean, that gives you an idea. I think Oakland botched like 80% of those. Uh, shout out to Neil Rule again. Uh, shout out. <laughs> oh, cool. I know, he, was, uh, I know he, he enjoyed that one, but you know, it, I think this time is perfect, right? You get to watch college basketball. It's a lot of fun. Um, you get to see things like Oakland the beating Kentucky. I mean, you had Bijan Robinson have a near perfect bracket. Is uh, it not perfect still- anymore? I think he, I think his first, I forgot what his loss was, but it's not perfect anymore. But Bijan Robinson was perfect for a, for a period of time and no longer. But, you know, that's March Madness. Let me give a shout out to some people that were here early. Uh, Coach Walk 37, a little late today. Yeah, well, I mean, technically, we usually have the stream up an hour early. So, yeah, you, you are right on that. We had about 10 minutes early yeah. today. Uh, appreciate you, Coach Walk ETN. We got Mike Reed in here, uh, Detroit Grit, Robin's Nest. We got Sarah as well. Um, Shout out! Course, we, we do. We appreciate you guys uh, on a Friday, especially. I know a lot of people got plans. You're hanging. You chose to hang with Friday yourself. night. Hang with the boys. So let's let's get this thing started here, guys. Um, I want to ask, and I'll bring this up. Booner, Mike, JJ McCarthy. He was throwing those sixty yard bombs. You know he he move it. Zach Wilson esque. You know he's, that's how he <laughs> looked out there. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Chill. There go. Here it goes again. Here it goes. Chill, chill. Oh, say, I just met, oh, good start. This is the. Met, no, I'm, I'm going to relax. Whoa, whoa, I know how this will get. I'm going I'm to take a step back. I, I, all I was saying, all I was saying is just that, you know, how Zach Wilson before the draft, he's, you know, one handers, roll out. You know, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm just saying. But anyway, I mean, there's good. a lot of good players that did the same thing, too. So, you yeah, know, I know. There's anyway. a bunch of quarterbacks you, that have done the same thing. Well, <laughs> you could have said Anthony Every Richardson. quarterback does the same thing, but it's got to be Zach Wilson. Yeah, yeah, like Johnny Manziel. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, no, he, Caleb Williams showed out. He showed out. I mean, JJ McCarthy, got to be yeah. consistent here. He, he was throwing some bombs. He had a 60 yard bomb. I'm going to put on the screen here. But, boys, other players worked out as well. A couple guys Great sat good. out due to injury, but. Hey, Zach Wilson's – or, excuse me, J.J. McCarthy. This guy, dude. <laughs> this is getting unbelievable. I'm this kidding. Okay. He's going to play Tom Brady for the Caleb Williams. I mean, that was an honest mistake. Th- this is, like, hey. gr- ingrained into your head now no, about well, J.J. McCarthy. Hold on. Hold on. So, J.J., a hey, smiling with John Lynch. I mean, fellas, what the pro day – what do you think the pro day did for J.J. today? A lot of people were there. People, people love him. And I keep seeing, again, like I said, there's a chance a month ago he goes top five, and now that's happening to where – Everything leading up, it's like this, this, that everything just kind of works out perfectly. Um, and it looks like there's going to be, and the rumors are a team's going to have to trade up into the top five to get JJ McCarthy. So that that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I've it, the, the throws today, I'm going to say this, and, and I'm not going to knock Caleb Williams at all because he's going to be very good and he's going to be the number one overall pick. Whoa, when you see, I said, no, I said Caleb's going to be the number one overall pick, no, he's going to be a good quarterback. What I'm saying though is. When you look at these pro days and some of these things, it's similar to when we were at the combine and and we're recording videos and it's like, all right, which ones do we want to put out? Do we want to put the good throws or the bad throws out? I only saw one and I and maybe it's just the way my Twitter is or my ex, whatever how it works. I only saw one throw from Caleb Williams whole pro day. Only one throw. 
Just one throw. And it was, oh, my gosh, look at him throw this ball. I saw one throw. Just one. I got to see, like, a whole highlight tape of J.J. McCarthy. So it's either maybe that means J.J. just had a really good day and Caleb had, like, it's it's like when we were at the Combine and, and you could take a video of one of Joe Milton's one good throws and be like, oh, there you go. Let's post that. He had a great day. Just throwing that out there. I only saw one throw I, I from Caleb Williams. I didn't see anything I, else. People were keeping it away. <laughs> my, my bad job. I, didn't mean to catch you. <laughs> I, I think a lot of that has to do, Booner, with JJ's biggest thing right now is people don't know what his arm is. People know that he has an arm, but they don't know really how developed it is. If you watch Michigan football and you've been observing it, you obviously know that JJ has an arm. But the whole development thing is can JJ make the intermediate throw? Does he have touch? With Caleb, I don't think there's any questions with Caleb's arm, so to say, more so with his maturity. So I think – you see that video of Caleb walking out, walking right past Keenan Allen. That's getting clipped the fuck up because that's the questions that are around Caleb. But I do agree with you. Like, I think JJ, I don't think the pro day, just like the combine, necessarily the throws made his draft stock go up. But I guarantee, like, there was more NFL GMs there sitting there with meetings, and he probably crushed the meeting. So it probably helped him even more. But I agree with you. I was wrong. I kind of laughed at you, Booner, for saying he's going to be top five. I don't think Caleb or JJ should be top five. But at this point, it looks inevitable, especially with the Chargers sitting at five. Yeah, like let's 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 pull it up. Like some of the some of the tape uh, that we kind of saw. Here's a clip, and I'll pull up Do another know one. All the oh, sorry. I mean, I, I mean, he hey, it almost hit the Dude. ceiling. He <laughs> He's got an off. Today. Oh He's no God. Anthony Richardson. Yeah, the like, I don't know. There's a throw. The, 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 the other video throw you're gonna see. It's just like an Anthony Richardson throw. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I mean this yeah, dude, like there's this no. Can, you yeah. cannot take. You can't deny his arm. Like I'm, I'm not gonna even argue that. Like and that's why I think you know when we talk about it, we're like, oh well. The, National media gets to see his arm. I'm like, well, here locally, everybody knew, knows he has an arm. I mean, we all knew that. I mean, watching Michigan, that they didn't get to utilize him as much as we'd, we'd like to, um, or, or at least he would have even liked to. But, hey, they won an Natty, And you're getting to see it now on full display. I mean, wasn't Mikey Sanders still running some routes for him, too? I saw that. I yeah, some like, I, some like yeah, Mikey. Stuff. What can he Hey, do? that's good, though. Especially because when you talk about you want to have a DB that has the ability to have ball skills, if he can show that he can run routes and catch like a receiver, that's going to help his draft stock too, just a little bit. Well, he was you a former receiver too, which helped play, him. play that video from, from the back, from the, the behind angle. That that is when it gets it a little. Right you're like you're like here's, wait a second. Here's that's that two. throw. Here's sixty five yards. They said too. So here's um, this throw on full display again. Roll out, boom. That, that is just an absolute like a he, cannon. Dude. I think, yeah. and I, I already said it, but his mannerisms and everything, I think if there's a accurate comp and I'm being like, I'm not even, this is not a diss, this is not me glazing. I, he reminds me a lot of Alex Smith and Alex Smith people might laugh at because when he was the number one pick out of Utah, he was presumed a bust, but the 49ers in that time were absolutely terrible. Then Jim yeah. Harbaugh gets there and Alex Smith is winning you 11 games, 12 games, he's taking you to the NFC Championship game. He had a good arm, good mobility. So I think it's a good comp for him. I don't think JJ has like, a Josh Allen arm, but he's definitely got an arm. Yeah, do we he's have a five star like recruit? Five star. Do recruit. we have like the list of all the teams that were there? Obviously, the Broncos were, and I think the Vikings. Sure. But do we have any yeah. other ones? I'll I'll find that because it's a it's a it's a good question. I know Mikey, but there was a lot of teams there also to watch, like Mikey. Yeah. Um, some they of the had players, so many players in the draft. Yeah, I know the Giants were there. Um, I mean, the John Lynch was there. I mean, probably for all, everybody. I mean, Mich- it's Michigan mm-hmm. for crying out loud. They have like 15, what, 16 players that are going to be drafted. But I saw John Lynch talking cool. to him, too. I got that photo I'm going to pull up here. Like, it just, uh, you know, it's like, what do we, what does John think? What do you think John it's interesting, think? It's an interesting photo. Yeah, like, like check check this photo out here. Look look at look at this. I mean, you got you got John Lynch. Look at just, just, hey, what's up, JJ? How you doing? Let me talk to you for a second. Hey, what are those two talking about over he's, there? He's asking about Chris Jenkins. That's what he's doing. Asking about what Chris Jenkins guys? and Roman Wilson. He's like, "Am I good to move off Brandon Ayuk? Can I send him to the Patriots for a third for Roman Wilson? You think that'll work out?" Not yeah. telling you. Yeah, well, he ain't there for no JJ. I I will stand. I think there are going to be. I think the top four picks are quarterbacks. That's just how. That's how I feel about it. I mean, I, I just think you got Caleb, Jade, and I, I think Drake May. And then, of course, I think someone trades up for JJ. The biggest thing I'm curious about, the biggest X factor, is what the Patriots do. Because if they trade mm-hmm. back, you know, Minnesota, you're in a tough – because in Arizona, too. I mean, Arizona could trade back. That It's all interesting. Like, if Arizona trades back and jumps Minnesota trying to trade up, like, there's so many storylines. I think one, one and two are pretty much booked. 
The I'm Patriots curious, need to draft happened. a quarterback, think, though. So yeah, they're like they could yes. probably go back and get like Michael Penix or Bo Nix, but they just they don't have anyone right now. Like they they yeah. really don't. Bailey Zappi, they had they don't have a quarterback, so but they need to. Here's the counter argument because me yeah. and Lucas disagree with that thought process, but I actually I get why people would think that, and I have a different reason, not just because the roster's not ready. What do you think about Gerard Mayo, rookie head coach? You think his first year they bring in a rookie because I mean, God forbid he's he's a bust it's only going to hurt him. Like you'd rather him as a first time head coach be like, all right, easy cop out. We're not going to get Caleb or Jane Daniels trade back, build the roster. We'll suck. And then we'll get the number one pick next year. Or do you think Gerard Mayo just says F it? Let's take a QB. Cause if he doesn't work out boys, that it's hard. So, not everybody gets another chance to redo that. You know, unless you're Robert Sala and you get Aaron Rodgers. you know what I mean? There's that maybe, too. Maybe he just wants a chance to pick his own QB and build his own team the way it is. But I, I don't know if he would want to take the chance and, you know, trade back and draft a guy like Michael Penix when you have an opportunity to get possibly, you know, one of the top three quarterbacks in this draft. So if I was Gerard Mayo, I would probably pick my quarterback right then and there and then build on from there. But I don't know what you guys think. I, I think too, like, no matter what, you're probably not going to be good. Even if you get a Drake May, it, you're probably not going to be good anyways. Why not just yeah. get your quarterback in there, your franchise guy in there, if you like Drake May and just, yeah. or JJ, and just start building around him like instantly. Like you yeah. have a chance now, get him in the building a year earlier. You have five years with them. All right, let's get this thing rolling here. And and we're to where next year, yeah, but if you already like a guy in this class and you'd like one of these quarterbacks, again, who's, who's quarterback number one in next year's draft? We haven't really talked about that. Maybe they have an idea and they know, but – you're not guaranteed that. So Quinn Ewers. Yeah, I would say Quinn yes. Ewers, baby. Why not? And, and Drake Mays, a guy like Dan Orlowski even thinks that should potentially sit out for a year and kind of learn. So you, even if you bring your guy in and, and he doesn't play right away, let Bailey Zappi or whoever it is go out there and get the reps. Uh, Jacoby Brissett. And I think Jacoby Brissett's back in at New England. Um, and just I let them so. kind of take it for the year and just let that, that rookie quarterback – learn and learn and learn and even at halfway through the year if you feel like he's ready to go and you feel like hey it's time for you to step in you can go do that like it's it's quicker to kind of take that next step in your franchise once you get that guy in the building yeah i mean you're not wrong but i just go back to the point of just the patriots even in the secondary they need something to lose and bill belichick arguably the greatest defensive head coach of all time so that's going to have an impact on their defense which was already their strength if you're really the patriots i mean I, I completely get what you and Gentry are saying, where it's like, get a quarterback in there. He can develop for a system. But even in that year, that can ruin a quarterback, especially playing in the AFC East. You look around, they got the Dolphins, the Bills, and then you have the Jets, who could probably, if the Jets stay healthy, that's a team to mess with in the AFC. I think that's just waiting for a problem to happen as far as that's how you crush a rookie quarterback. Because let's say they're in a position where it's like, Bailey Zappi fucking sucks. And now we're getting <laughs> JJ, JJ, Drake May, whoever it is. And then he comes in there, he doesn't perform. Now you potentially are looking at, is this the guy? Do we want to add another wide receiver? And if he doesn't, if he isn't the guy and you draft a wide receiver and he still doesn't work, well, now Gerard Mayo just lost his job probably because he's a defensive guy. I think if you add a Marvin Harrison, you trade back to wherever and you take a Malik Neighbors. And then kind of what Jeff said, you take a Bo Nix, a Michael Penix, somebody, a Sam Hartman. You can let him kind of develop and you can see what you have in him. And then if he still isn't anything, okay, now draft the guy next year. Because I think even if the Patriots go quarterback or wide receiver, DB, whatever they want to do, they're going to be back in the top five next year. I don't see a way that they win more than five games this year. I, yeah, I think there's an argument, even though I'm I'm with more with Boone aligned with that thinking. Like, if I like a quarterback, I'm going to take him. But, like, I think there's an argument for both sides. Like, I, I like if, if Gerard Mayo, if they trade back or they, they get a Marvin Harrison or – you know, they, they get them a league neighbors. I would be like, still a good move. And they get more assets. Like, I wouldn't hate it's both. It's a good move, but just, you just set your quarterback back again. Like, you just don't know. Yeah, you get the top five next year. Again, Quinn Ewers, he's going to, like, are you, is he better than Drake May? No. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, I give I, him I Marvin that, Harrison, is he? But, but here's the thing, though. Jane Daniels, where was he at last year? On your board. No, <laughs> no I'm saying on your board no. in terms of this year. <laughs> Because he yeah, came out and had a one-year high. I'm with you on that. I guess there's going to be some guys that pop up, but this is just more so of a quarterback uh, class. It's a good, like last it's a year, he had class. all the DNs at the beginning, and you had Anthony Richardson and obviously yeah. Bryce, you know, Bryce Young. But I don't know. And I'm 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 interested to see what they do. The Patriots are the wild card in this. I and is is a is a Michigan fan too. I was thinking of this today. It would be an absolute disaster if JJ works his way all the way up and gets drafted number three overall and, and jumps straight man. Yeah. Like that would yeah. be an absolute disaster for him. And like in my head, I'm just like, please don't let that happen for just 
in my sake, just for because I do think he can be good if he goes to like the Vikings. Just don't let that happen. They're in New York. I just, that, just too I guess that's that, what I was gonna say too. That that's yeah. my whole like feeling around because even if it's JJ, it could be Jaden Daniels. If Jaden Daniels goes to New England, the, the commanders take Drake May at two. Like I think any quarterback to your point, even Caleb. I don't see them having a successful situation in New England, not even this year, but even two years. Like, I think it's – that's – I mean, we we got into debate over, but we talked about that argument of Heisman or uh, national championship winning quarterbacks that are drafted in the first round and actually went on to produce, and that's that whole stat where it's like, can you overcome? Because in New England, you're going to have to overcome one, two, three, four, maybe even five things because you don't even know how, <laughs> much, how much longer Robert Kraft's going to be in that building. If the Patriots take another shitter year, if they got to move off Gerard Mayo, why would Robert Kraft be in – 103 years old want to stress himself even more when he's already a billionaire i just think it's one of those things where it's a disaster waiting to happen you'd much rather risk the career of a wide receiver than a quarterback if you're taking him top five yeah and that's a hell of a like for me if you're not taking a quarterback because i think they should um and i'm not going to argue the situation because it's 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 not great but if they take like a marvin harrison they could find a way to get him like i think you're like all right you walked away with a dude who's you're probably going to build a statue for Like, I mean, it's worth uh, to me. Uh, it, that's how I look at it. But, well, it's curious. I think the Patriots are a wild card. Uh, I think it's a fit. I, I think it's confirmed that the Vikings are going to, they're going to do everything in their power to get can a quarterback. We, can, probably. Can we just talk about the opposite of that? Bringing a Marvin Harrison in, in the new England. What if you never get a quarterback for him? Then you just wasted his career. But, well, yeah, I but mean, how sorry, sorry. Sorry. No, I was gonna say also bringing them in could kind of make them a destination, and m- maybe other like quarterbacks, free agents want to go there, and obviously maybe rookie quarterbacks wouldn't be so opposed to going there like some are probably now. If you do draft the, a guy like Marvin Harrison, and the other thing is, is like Marvin Harrison because I, I we all love wide receivers. We talked about it. they're probably the new sexiest position in football, but right. wide receivers, especially one, he might win you an extra game, but as a rookie. Like Marvin Harrison isn't going to jack their win total up. The offseason they had isn't going to jack their win total up. They arguably could have gotten worse. So you look, they're probably going to be a top five pick. They'll probably have a good pick in the second round. You have Marvin Harrison, you take a quarterback top five, and you get an Xavier Leggett in the the second round the following year. You got a pretty attractive offense in two years, and it's a young one. So I just think long-term, Patriots' best way to success is bite the bullet now. Take that Panay Sewell pick where it's just not – it's not the fun pick. It's not the quarterback that you want, but it's what you need to do in the moment. Uh, Fellas, I want to bring this up before we kind of get to our uh, first-round mock draft, which I'm excited to do with the fellas. Uh, We have alternating picks. I pick one. Booner – I just went that way. Booner picks two. Lucas picks three. And Gentry picks four. I'm pointing all over the place. But you get the point. Uh, (laughs) So we'll we'll have alternating picks. Booner, I'm sorry. We're not doing a snake draft. I know that was your (laughs) – that was your proposition. Yeah, I just – I've never done a draft where it's not a snake draft. So this is like my first – What do you mean snake draft? Like when you just do do a draft with the boys, like anything, whether it's the NFL draft or whether it's like fantasy or if it's just like you're drafting like just random things, it's like typically it's a snake. Like – it's just so as important. in like, as in like Mike would pick fourth and then pick again, you know, yeah, like so oh, then work. Yeah, like that's okay. just how like every draft I've ever like done in my life football, has always been. Yeah, I've never not done okay. a snake draft, so this is, this I'm is new there. to me. I think it's whatever. Yeah, I mean, well, it, well, it is what I mean. Either way, it'll, I'm it'll excited be though. Point. I've got a little booklet yeah, here. I, I looked at some mock drafts. Wait, no. The notes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, I baby. Because I've got, I mean, we've got, I've got eight teams, and I had to kind of look at, well, hey, what are these oh. teams' needs? Real quick, what? we'll let the chat pick five. Yeah. Well, I already yeah. have notes. That kind of fucked up the order. I was going to say. Yeah. Let's yeah. not okay. do that until next time. Next okay. Week. I, next I love the, we'll the, the ideas, next but time. we've already discussed. I, I love the chat, too. But. You have a whole strategy? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I've got, like, I've, I've, I've studied the first round, so I know what teams need. Like, the teams that I have, what do they need? What are other people picking there? What are the kind of I, – I have an idea. So just so we can make it realistic. It's not like we just go in here and just yeah. pick our favorite players left on the board. <laughs> and then what we'll do that's for not, next If you guys week, do that, we... it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and then what we'll do for next week, we'll like so sort of like for pick five, we'll each pick a player, and then whoever somebody put a poll up, and then we'll let the chat pick on the poll, just because we'll probably have like a thousand answers of different players. You know what I mean? Yeah, Especially that's when we get back point. in like the twenties. So we'll all pick a player, and then the chat yep. will vote on the one we should take. Well, I, I had more of a serious subject, but more of just an update. I wanted to at least get this out because Dave Burkett put this out, and I I think it's information that I think a lot of people would want to know in case you don't. Dave Burkett. 
He tweeted out, ask the sheriff's department. Uh, well, we'll go to Justin Rogers tweet first. Excuse me. He says more than 48 hours after a warrant was made public for Cam Sutton in Hillsborough County, the former Lions cornerback still hasn't turned himself in or have been apprehended by the department. And then Dave Perquette quote tweeted that and says, I asked the sheriff's department earlier about worries about Cam Sutton's well-being. Like, hey, you guys concerned? What's the update on his health? They said, that's not a concern at this point. Um, and I think he, he followed that, that up. Well, I, I believe, okay, so this is the next thing. Because someone commented, not a concern to who? Being MIA seems concerning for Cam, his family, friends, accuser, et cetera. They said they don't consider him MIA. They consider him avoiding the law. So again, whether it's right or wrong, I'm just telling you what how they how they look at this thing. Um, we need to so, get that one guy on the case. Who's that guy that's on like uh, E or something? Like uh, he goes and hunts down like people who like are have bonds out there. The, the bounty oh, hunter the guy, dog, guy, the bounty hunter. Oh, well, they didn't uh, get dog bounty, the bounty hunter. Dogs? On You're talking about <laughs> dog needs to get dog. Dog. They need to find Cam Sutton. This is a big name person that's just avoiding the law. We thought something's wrong with him. He's just avoiding the law. You have to get dog the bounty hunter on this. Dog? That is a hell of a dude. I love I dude. I used to watch dog with my father. The Why dog is dog not on this? Why is he not dog on this? Dog was our guy. Actually, you know what, Booner? I'm an idiot. I, I feel stupid for not thinking about that. Why don't they call dog? Where is that he? Dude would, you get, dude would roll, you get him as three crazy ass sons, dude. His yeah. sons are fucking psycho. There's an there's literally an NFL player on the loose right now, and no one knows where he's at. Again, like warrant out, and you're gonna tell me this is not a bigger bigger story. Where is Cam's son? And dogs like lives in Florida or something like that. So he's, he's already <laughs> stationed no, he's out there. Alive. He's a drive away. He's like alive. why? Why haven't you got on the phone with this guy yet? They call dog. He's like he's like they, what? They like to... dog. One more time. We need you one more time. We got Cam's son. <laughs> the Vince Carter. Got, got one more in me. Yeah, I got, got one, one more in me. In me. <laughs> they need, they need a, I think I think that dude lives in like fucking Hawaii. They're gonna have to book him first class straight to hills, bro. Let him on the loose. He's got dog guns for spray gun. Yeah. Do we what? lose Lucas? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm like I'm, I'm waiting for him to finish. It was like, uh, go ahead. I didn't want to cut him off. And yeah, you know, just, I'm gonna I look mean, well, no, there he is. What up, Lucas? What up? Yeah, I will. Well, I, I'll, I'll say this about dog, there, man, or just about oh, this whole oh, thing. Oh. Like, if they get dog, there's no chance he's gone. Um, because they'll he'll, they'll get him. Hawaii. What the fuck? I don't yeah. understand the law sometimes, to be honest. How is it just not like you just put out a post, first of all, all and, and made this thing like absolutely public, an NFL player, whatever it's called, warrant Wednesdays. Like you're putting out this post, and then just that you, was you're best, just gonna though. be like, No one had we haven't like this is March 7th, no one's heard from him since, and then you're just gonna be like, It's not an it's not an us issue, he's just avoiding the law. Like, no, you're putting out a post, go find the guy. You you said you can't locate him on his phone. You can't call his phone's off, so you can't call him. And then oh, it's just not our issue. That's crazy to me. I don't understand the law. Then if like I if something that's happening with someone, like go find them. Because I don't know. I could be. I don't know. I no, could be I mean, so it, far off on this. It may be the law is being a little. It's probably more frustration because they've been looking for him. So they're like, we don't care about his well being. I mean, I get why people would bring that up. Um, I'm not a fan of it when we talk about the situation and people are, you know, quick to be like, oh, how dare you? You know, why, why are you why are you worried about the victim? You should be worried about him. And like, I'm not saying the Chad does this, but that is a little aggressive. But I, I do. I wonder if he's OK. I mean, that's a that's an OK question to ask. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm wondering how the Lions communicated that he was released. Like, who do they communicate that to? His agent, you know probably. His, his agent, his agent. Yeah. But then does his agent respond with like, OK, but. I don't know. I doubt his agent. He probably doesn't want to tell his agent anything. Like if I choked out a woman and the last thing I'd want to do is tell my agent like, yo, just so just so you know, so you can tell the lines. And so so reporters can come talking to you. He probably doesn't want to give his agent any clarification. It's like it's like a professional Karen. You know what I mean? Like they they run they run the business side of your career. You don't you don't want to give them anything out of your personal life. I imagine like telling him he got released would be like uh, getting served, you know, where they have to find you. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, he's like, he's like walking around like, are you Cam Sutton? Well, here you go. You're released. <laughs> <laughs> they got my ass. But I don't, I don't know where, I don't, I don't know how they do that. How do they deliver the news? You know, they have to tell his agent and his agent's like, I don't know what you want me to do with this shit. I don't know where he is. Like, I don't, I don't know how that, how that communication is, but yeah, sheriff's office, they're, they're kind of thinking of Cam Sutton as a man on the run. Like I, whether we agree with it or not, that's just how they they communicated to Dave Burkett. So, you know, hopefully he turns up, turns himself in and or. 
is alive at this point, man. So call dog. He'll get it done in a day. I mean, dog, the dog will track baby. Yeah, dog it's crazy. Will track All right, fellas. I mean, you guys know what time it is, right? Let me, let me know it. what time. It's time for our first ever full first round mock draft. Let's go. We're doing this. We're doing the thing right here. Okay. Doing and, the thing. and I don't know how the other fellows feel. I mean, we know some players we like, like, you know, I, I think my number one pick is, I, I can't wait. I'm going to throw them off with this one. <laughs> uh, I, I can't wait for that. You're lucky. But, I didn't get the first pick. It, it'll, it'll, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be a great. <laughs> Who would have drafted JJ? Boone, you should have done it. <laughs> No, Boone would have took Jane Daniels, and I would have been like, "Why, Boone?" He would have been like, "We would have, we probably would have spent twenty minutes arguing." So, you know, this is what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna get the. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. What are you laughing at? Just we probably spent twenty minutes arguing about the Jane Daniels were number one. <laughs> well, I, I would have probably done. I would have probably done that too, just so I could I could get under some of the boys' skin. So here's here's what we're working with. Okay, so no, here's the. <laughs> <laughs> no trades no <laughs> trades you can't try to negotiate with one of you guys for a trade no <laughs> jeff what do you want for that number one pick brother uh, well, hey I brother mean, no we can't because you know even if you do minnesota war well, like you can't go but you know what i mean it's because yeah, we're going no, in I, order we're good we're good let's, yeah yeah because let's say this let's clarify this there will be trades um, obviously yeah. on every draft night there's trades so we're doing for this sure. no for trades sure. full first round nfl mock draft I'm first, and this is kind of in order. I'm first, Booter's second, Lucas is third, Mike's fourth. All right, boys. Not a snake draft, just so people know. <laughs> Jesus. Not to Booter's delight. <laughs> Booter's pissed. All right, let's get it going. All right, for the first pick. Yeah, I'm just going to get this out. <laughs> there there we go. Go. Right, I wish I had it. control. I wish I had control over here. All right, hold up? on. Wait, Boone, My you, pick is in. Get... Yep. All right, who, who does Booner select here? Oh, I Second wonder who. Pick, 2024 NFL Draft, Booner selects. Oh, sorry. Let me go down. JJ. He's kind of sorry. He's like JJ, <laughs> Jaden Daniels. <laughs> Jaden Daniels. JJ McCarthy. <laughs> if I said JJ McCarthy, throw you guys off. Now, I want to take this serious. I, I do want to make sure we do this right so we can we can get a good feel here. So I'm not going to mess mm, around all right. with that. I'm locked in, boys. I've got a whole draft board over here in my head. <laughs> Let me, yeah, I got my draft. Lucas is Booner Holmes. Patriots. Booner Holmes is in the lab. Hey, fellas, we just talked about it. Patriots, they need a quarterback. But with the third pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the New England Patriots, like Maserati, Mar, Mar. No, Harris. don't do that. <laughs> uh, Lucas oh, messed the, the whole draft up already. Oh, he's oh, hard. Hard. That's that's what's going to Oh, Mar for Mike. Hold up. But this is an interesting here. pick now. This is an interesting yeah. pick for Mike. Because they Steven do said, Bo "Thank you, Booner, for ruining this. Thank you, Lucas, for ruining this draft already." <laughs> no, Booner, no one ruined it. So they need offensive line, and Joe Alt can kind of be moved around a little bit. But ooh, ooh hold on, what are we thinking? Mike? I'm gonna do with the fourth pick, <laughs> wide receiver out of LSU, Malik Neighbors. Oh, oh my gosh! Wow, gets a dog. Goes Chargers BPA. are fucking pissed. The Chargers are pissed. <laughs> yeah, the char. I'm butthurt. All right, if I'm the Chargers, I'm completely butthurt. Um, I'm taking Drake wow, this May. Is my battle, battle, lot, boys. I'm not gonna lie. My board is <laughs> already gone. I've lost all of my players already. <laughs> hey, May. Oh man, I'm gonna so... make Herbert and Drake May fight to the death here. <laughs> Who's QB one? No, I'm gonna uh, I'm hold on with kittles. the with the fifth pick in the 2024. NFL draft. I'm going with tackle Joe Wall. I'm I'm taking I'm taking Joe Wall. He, he's he's going to play on the other side the of Sean Slater. We're building from the trenches, boys. All I'm right, really Boone. excited. This got to the, the, I'm really excited. What happened is happening for me because I get to do the best thing <laughs> in the world, ladies and gentlemen. I pick his in. You can hit it, Jeff. Hit it. All right, hold. Uh, you know, he already decided. <laughs> <laughs> For the sixth pick in the 2024 NFL draft, my brother, JJ McCarthy. <laughs> my brother. <laughs> oh, here Who's we go. What's that button right there? Come on. Uh, press it. All right. JJ McCarthy. And by the way, uh, real quick, I know people are talking about why did the Chargers take a wide receiver? I, I just think Harbaugh 
in terms of wide receivers, you guys know how he feels. Like he'll, he's going to build from the trenches. That's how, I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of him as well. All right, uh, Lucas, Tennessee Titans. What do you think? I'm, I'm thinking of multiple players here, but if I had to pick one, with the number seven pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans will select. Drop the chime for me. All right. Oh, what does he got? Brock Bowers, tight end, oh, from Georgia. Ton it to the Titans. Yeah. Brock I, I mean, you Bowers. Just, Lucas has single handedly ruined my whole draft board. Just going. <laughs> wow. Brock Bowers. Holy mm-hmm. God. Right. Give end. Will Levis a new best friend for the next five six years if they stick with Will Levis. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it at all. He probably would have rather liked Roma Dunze to be honest. Yeah, but they got Calvin Ridley. Yeah, that's and Roma Dunze and Calvin Ridley. That would have been a yeah. I mean, not room. wrong, but but I mean, you got a young quarterback. Tight end's going to be his best friend. Brock uh, Bowers, very uh, elite as a receiving threat and blocking. I think he's one of those guys that is going to be one of the best players in this draft. As he goes up, goes out of goes on time. I'm on the the Falcons GM Michael Gentry. <laughs> All right, with the eighth pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner from Alabama. Oh, okay, that's a great one. Mm-hmm. Dallas I think this Turner. picks a lock in real life. Like if Turner's yeah. still there, I don't see a way that Raheem Morris doesn't take him. So I ha- I'm the Bears at nine. Um, yeah, this is interesting because you see you see Roma Dunze mock there, but boys, I just I don't think they're going to go wide receiver again. Mm-hmm. So here's where it gets a little spicy. Hold on, with the ninth pick of the 2024 NFL Draft. The Bears take. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on. This got tough. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm going Drazon Newton. Wow. Newton. Yep. Get a guy That's next early. to Montez Sweat. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what we're doing. Yep. I'm going with Drazon Newton, defensive tackle. Boone. All right, Boone. You. You're up. I want to do something that just throws everyone off here. I, I think you should do it. I know exactly what you're thinking. I think you should. I, don't, I think the Jets I might do know, that. I don't know if you think I, if, if we're thinking the same thing here. Can you scroll a little you bit? Are. So there's a situation in New York right now, fellas, and I want to break this down to you here before I make my pick. Okay. Mm-hmm. They have Mike Williams, who just came in. Now they have their wide receivers, right? They have their defense built up already. I would go offensive line. They just got free agents at the offensive line, and they've added I that. Smith. If we want to be serious, the New York Jets really don't have, like, holes to fill. The only hole longer. in the future to fill right now is you have a very volatile piece at the quarterback position, which mm-hmm. is Aaron Rodgers, and you have mm-hmm. a guy in Drake May sitting on the board. Uh-huh. Just, if this goes the way it does. And he could sit a year and learn, as Dan Orlowski said that he should do. And if you're learning behind the one of the best ever in Aaron Rodgers, play the play the music, Jeff. Play the music for me. I love this book. The Vikings the are New York ah! <laughs> select Drake May out of North Carolina. Wow. I love it, Booner. I lo- is, I would have done the is... exact same thing, Booner. Same thing. I was gonna go Brock Bowers, and you 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 stole him from me. But the fact Drake May is on the board, and if he's sitting there on the board at ten, which I think is highly, it's not gonna happen. He's yeah. gonna be, it's the quarterbacks are all gonna go in the top five. But if this happened, Drake like the Jets and the Vikings, the Jets. Are, I mean, you have to do that. There's no I, no reason to pass him up. I think it's a I think it's a good pick. I mean, it's a pick. Like, is Aaron? What do you think Aaron has? Two years? Maybe a year? Maybe two? this might even get- be his last year. You have to have life after Aaron Rodgers and the Jets in terms of quarterbacks have been a disaster. So Drake May for the future. Now we got hey, we got Klotzy at eleven. Now they're pissed. And the yeah. Vikings just got Drake May stole right from them. So yeah, Minnesota's in shambles. The question is, are you gonna take Bo Nix eleventh overall? And as long as I'm the GM, you ain't fucking doing that. So I look around. <laughs> they need defense. They address the front seven. Listen. There's a boy down in Alabama playing for the Crimson Tide that's not named Kool-Aid McKinstry that if we if he went at 11, I don't think anybody would be mad at. So with the number 11th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, Jeff hit it. The Minnesota Vikings select Terrion Arnold, cornerback Alabama. There you go. 
Here we go. They got they get their future CB one and a wide receiver by the, or a division by the way with a very good wide receivers. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a fair pick. All right, Mike, you're up. You're uh, you're Sean Payton here. All right, what is he doing? I also agree with Lucas here. Bo Nix is mid, so we have a plan <laughs> for a quarterback in the future. So with the number twelve pick, we are taking Roma Dunze out of Washington. Oh, okay, Jerry Judy replacement. Okay, way better. Way better. Uh, look at that, Roma Dunze. They have uh, a. They have to reunite, you know, Penix and uh, Odunze. Yeah, that's a great Ooh. pick. Uh, he's yeah. pissed. He fell. He's about to win Offensive Rookie of the Year now. That's how that goes. But <laughs> hey, uh, I'm. I pick thirteen. I got the Raiders. Oh, geez, this where gets. <clears throat> this where gets interesting. Yeah. Because. <sighs> you know what? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I know what I'm doing. With the 13th pick for the 2024 NFL Draft, the Raiders select Ailis Fuaga, oh. offensive tackle from Oregon State. I don't hate it. Build mm-hmm. up that offensive line. That's yeah, what they're I like. Doing. Him and Colton Miller at tackles. Gardner yep. Minshew is going to be very well protected this year. Throw there you go. Can, <laughs> can you there slowly you scroll for me, Jeff? Yep. What is Booner thinking? He's the I Saints. Go back, go back up a little. Up a little. Stop. No, nope, back down a little. What do you, brother? Stop right there. There we go. What? Why? The New Orleans Saints. They need to protect Derek Carr. They need it. They need a, a solidified starter. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't. I'm not even gonna try. It. For Sean, you. Big O. Big O. Be the big Sean. Bring him home to New Orleans. Wow. There you go. Olu Fashanu, tackle out of Penn State. He got a lot of potential. He's going to New Orleans. All right. I've drafted three that. quarterbacks and a tackle so far. This is this is boring. So that <laughs> hey, that puts the Colts up at 15. The Colts got 15. Mr. Klotz, Chris Ballard. What's he thinking? Yep. What's hey, he thinking? There's, there's a lot of areas defensively that they can go. They re-signed my boy Grove. Thought he might be out the window. <laughs> They have uh, DeForest Buckner there. So it looks like on the defensive line, they're set. Offensive line can improve, but so can the the cornerbacks on the perimeter. So I'm going to break every Lions fan's heart. Hopefully Brad makes a move by them. But with the 15th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Quinion Mitchell, cornerback to Toledo. There you go. Quinion to the Colts. He's going to be there. Yeah, that's a perfect spot for him. All right, Seattle at 16. Mr. Gentry. What do you think? Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks are going to select Edge from UCLA. Lot two. Oh, <laughs> Jared Burst is still on the board too. <laughs> oh, la. Oh, the okay. first Edge by our second Edge off the board. Lot two. All right, he's going to the he's going to the Seahawks. All right, so I'm I'm the Jags. The Jags at seventeen, <clears throat> and you know here here is where it gets a little interesting because. They need corners, fellas. Yeah. They need corners. It's that simple. Austerius Williams. Here we go. <laughs> with the 2024 and in the with the what 17th pick in the 2024 yeah. NFL draft. The Jags select mm-hmm. Nate Wiggins. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Nate Wiggins. That's your pick? Yep. That's your pick? <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought you were a Kool-Aid guy. Prefer Nate uh, Wiggins no. over Kool-Aid? Hey, well, <laughs> one, one, hey, <laughs> at Nate Wiggins to the Jags, he's still on the board. They need a corner. And I think if they draft right. Cooper DeGene, he'd move to safety. I, I think they want a strict – they want a – they need a corner. So, and Nate Wiggins comes. You got to gain some weight, though, Lucas. Got to gain some weight. Yeah, got to gain some weight. A lot of fucking weight. All right, Boone, you're the Bengals at pick 18. What are, they, what are you doing? Um. Oh, well, this is tough, boys. Can can you give me a little? Can you give me a little a little move here? I want to see who's on the board here. I thought you pressed. Nice and bro. I I did, but I need to see. I need to see who. I need to see who's on the board. Can you can you give me yeah. a, like an up and down scroll a little bit? Back yeah, down. Okay. Other way. You're going All way right. too far, brother. You're going oh way too. We're, in the, we're at 18, brother. Way we're too far, 18. brother. Scroll back up, brother. Brother. All right, go back up. I know who I'm picking. See see that man right there, the man. 
Well, you got to say it. Out of Alabama. (laughs) J.C. Latham. Give me J.C. Latham to the Bengals. I'm pretty sure in my prep here, they lost Jonah Williams, their their, uh, right tackle, and he is gone. And they need to replace a tackle, and they need someone who's going to step in right away. J.C. Latham out of Alabama. That is the pick. They will be taking a tackle. Hey, oh, real quick before we go with this pick, shout oh, out. Go crazy, B. <laughs> Man, I found Jeff and Booner and Lucas now need Adam, so my days will go smooth. Well, when Adam gets out of jail, uh, we will we would love to to welcome him. Uh appreciate the five dollars though. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. All right, you're up, Lucas. There you go. You're the right, Rams. This is tough. You're less this is tough. If I if I'm here, I'm looking at the roster. You need to protect Matthew Stafford. But you arguably just lost the best defensive player of all time. Now, I think Lawrence Taylor is better. But you just lost Aaron Donald. That is an absolute hole you need to fill. This one's pretty easy. With the 19th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Byron Murphy out of Byron. Texas. Good, good pick. Yeah, just lost Aaron. The great pick. I don't know if Byron Murphy will fall this far, but that is a great pick. Yep. I agree. There you with go. You, all right. Uh, with the 20th pick. I'm taking the tackle out of Washington, Troy. I'm going to butcher his last name, but that was one of two who I was going to pick with this pick. So he he made it. Oh, Tano? It's all right. Yep. He's a Tano. hell of a player. There Great you go, Tano. Mike. Uh, the, the Steelers get their future tackle uh, next to Broderick Jones, who they drafted last year. Um, I'm the Dolphins. All right. We're yep. sitting in an interesting position here because – Your needs, brother. Yeah. Well – they need offensive line help. And there's one on and, the board. And I think we know where they're going. Um, yeah. And here's the thing. And I, I don't – What they did they, it's either a tackle or, or maybe an interior offensive lineman. That's where I'm – I'm not sure exactly what they need. They need interior. They Yeah, so this is easy, boys. I mean, with the, with, with the 21st pick in the 2024 NFL draft, I mean, I'm, I'm not even flinching. I'm taking Jackson yeah. Powers Johnson. Um, he needs They're to not keep gonna, four up right I, now. So. I they, hate they our mock resign. draft. <laughs> you don't like I it? I hate this. No, because this, this next pick's going to make me really mad. And I have to do it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but the Dolphins, they won't go and uh, tackle because they have Teron Armstead from New Orleans who stays healthy sometimes, but he's still a good player. And then they just re-signed Austin Jackson that they got out of USC like two or three years ago. Well, and here's the thing. <clears throat> I, this is fun to do because we're all going to be wrong when the draft happens anyway. Besides the first yeah. two picks, probably. So, um, I just saw some comments like, "You guys, there's no way it falls like this." Listen, man, I, Zero I would agree. Yeah, I would important. agree. I would agree. But like, do we? Do any of us know how it's going to fall the entire first round? <laughs> no. I mean, I, I saw Joe Clatt take Michael Penix to the Dolphins. <clears throat> so, Ooh. I mean, hey, anything can happen. But uh, so, you're up next, Boone. You're Philly. You're feeling yeah, um, just just give me it. I just 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 put it out there. Just do the sound real quick. Here we go. It's on your mind, Boone. Philadelphia Eagles select Jared Verse out of Florida State. <laughs> Another edge, dude. If he All falls, right. and if he falls, Philadelphia they need their defense was their problem last year. They need to keep that defensive line. If Jared right. if Jared Verse is at twenty two for for Philadelphia Eagles. I guarantee you Howie Roseman runs to the podium and takes Jared Verse. I would, like, guarantee okay. you he goes there. That is, like, their thing is their bread and butter. It's like the Lions with offensive line. It, 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 that's what they need. It's fair. Oh, I wish I had your next pick. pick. What did huh? you say, Lucas? I wish I had the next pick because I got both the Vikings pick, and I, I have a perfect pick for the Cowboys. But looking at it, looking at it, scroll a little bit, Jeff. We're a little scroll. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. So you took you, who'd you take? You took uh, Tyrone All right. Arnold. Tyrone yep. Arnold. All right, we're gonna do it. I know I said I wouldn't take him with the eleventh overall pick, but you traded up in the first round for a reason. You didn't get JJ. You got to walk out of there with something other than Sam Darnold in your cornerback room. With the twenty third pick in the NFL draft, I hope this happens too. The Minnesota Vikings select Bo Mid Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, Nicks. Oh, Nick. Nick. <laughs> I actually like that. Okay. What um, a man. Mike, you're up. You're you're Jerry Jones here. You're sitting on your yacht, making your selection. <laughs> it's going right. up through your head, Mike. Well, they do need offensive line. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I think I'm going to go with Graham Barton out of Duke here. Okay. Graham Barton is the selection there. It's a good one. Yep. The solid one. I like that. <laughs> they get their three. One else, but... Well, that leaves me, fellas, with the Packers. And I'm going to mm-hmm. pick up. Uh, uh, hey, this could, this could get interesting because they took an Iowa player last year. And oh, I'm taking, I hope they do this. I'm taking the white DB. Oh, baby shit. Jason Seahorn. Put him in the North. Oh, I'm, I fall, fell right into my lap. There you go. Pair him with uh, Xavier McKinney. You lost, you lost hey, Savage. Don't forget about Keyson Mixon either. Oh. Don't forget about him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you're friends with him. All right. That's my <laughs> uh, baby. Yeah. But uh, Booner. Yep. I'm here. You got the bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Check those notes, man. Check them thoroughly. <laughs> What's going on? Can you give me a little scroll and see who's left on the board? We're getting pretty slim, slim pickings here. All right. There's who's on the board. They got a lot of needs in Tampa. I see Maybe. a good one, Booner. Uh, keep going. Go up, up, up. Um, go back down a little bit. I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> stop. Go up, up a little. You, you, you okay, missed it a little. Okay, just say the player, Boone, and I'll find it. All right? I see just it right there. It. All right, send me, send me the sound. Give me the sound. All right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Fuck you. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Wow. You. Adding the third weapon there, Baker Mayfield. You don't know. Mike Evans did resign, and I believe there was a – how many years was that? A one-year deal, maybe a two-year? I think wow. two. I think it was two for like twenty four a year. They have Trey Palmer, I think, is their third receiver. But I think a guy they're they're gonna. I wouldn't be shocked if if all of the like big time guards and interior offensive linemen like Graham Burton and, and Jackson Powers wow. Johnson are off the board at twenty six. I think they go receiver. I, I do. I do think they go receiver. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Brian Thomas Jr., Trey Palmer. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good offense, if you ask me. Very deadly offense. I, I wanted to double up for Arizona to get the two LSU wide receivers so bad because Gentry took neighbors at four. I was like, give me neighbors and Brian Thomas walking out of the draft. Do you imagine that for Kyler? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Jesus. That would filthy. be wild. There's still a good wide receiver on the board. Yeah, there is. Oh, a couple of them, Boone. Mm-hmm. Hey. So, Lucas Klotz? Yep. You're, you're the Cardinals hey, here. We, we just talked about it. They took neighbors fourth overall. Uh, GM Gentry did. So, Jonathan Gannon, defensive head coach, they're going to go to the other side of the ball. And that defense outside of Buda Baker, who I, I think they franchise tag, but he's going to be returning. They need help in that secondary. And you look at Jonathan Gannon, when he was there in Philly, that secondary was a lot better than when he left. So, I think he's a – you could say he's a good uh, secondaries coach. So, I think he's going to go the other corner from Alabama, the man that Jeff Iafrady wants to land in Detroit so bad at pick number 29. Give me Kool-Aid McKinstry, number 27th wow. overall oh! in Arizona. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Damn it, I'd be so pissed. He's right there at 29. Damn. Um, uh, but, hey, goes to 27, great fit. They need secondary help. You get a guy. Now leaves Gentry with the Bills. They lost Gabe Davis. They lost some pieces. They, had a, they cut like everybody. In, I mean, hell, holy hell, the Bills had to shed some cap there. Now we got GM Gentry on the case. G- G- can you give me a scroll down real quick? I can. What do you What are you thinking here, Gentry? What are you thinking? All right, go back up. Sorry. You want Troy Franklin or Ennis Rankstraw? Fuck no, I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't want to draft two offensive linemen in a row. That's boring. I'll do uh, Adanya Mitchell. Get oh, Get him another weapon on the offense. Here we go. I like that. Gabe Davis replacement. Yeah. Better. I think it will be better. Um, Lions. Oh, soccer. Jeff gets the Lions pick. Big shot. Yeah, Big shot. Yeah, well, he set that one up perfectly, didn't he? No, well, <laughs> I'm just kidding, because I was originally number one. I had it. I So I, I'm I'm taking Peyton Wilson. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, Listen, this guys. One, yeah. Now. You know what? Let's get the chat. Chad, who do we want? Uh, let's get the chat. All right, because I think we should get them involved on something. We'll get them well, involved. We'll, we'll do what we did last time. Pay, well, I mean, should well, we all just we... pick a player and have them vote via poll? 
so yeah, put we could do a poll. I mean, or just if I see a common name, start putting the names in there. Um, so I, I don't I know, Edge, I, Mikey, Lad, mm-hmm. Graham Barton, Sanistro again, Mikey, Sanistro, Mikey. A lot of people are saying Mikey. Yeah, do Mike <laughs> Darius yeah, Robinson. Yeah. I see yeah, some Mike. Darius. I see some Mikeys. Um, I'll give it Is a little scroll down, Jeff. Yeah. Yep. So we got we got TJ Tampa here. Mike's still here. Lad. So I think Zach Mike here. Mikey is on going to be on the thing. He, there's a lot of Mikeys. I think you should do Chop yeah. Robinson. Fuck Darius Robinson here. is. No, I yeah. think you need to put him on. I think Darius we put on the board. I see a lot of Dariuses. Um. All right. Let me make a poll. Maybe we do TJ here. Tampa, Darius, Chop, and and Mikey. That's where I'm seeing right. so far. So here we go. So we. Um, all right, I'm going to put this poll. We'll do Darius, and we'll do a lot of people, TJ some people Tampa. Are trade back. I don't know if we can do that. No trades. No trades. It makes it too complicated. Just This is only no trades. Um, and we got Mikey S. Who's the fourth? So, TJ Tampa. Um, Darius Robinson. Darius, Robinson Mike chop, still. Chop, chop. 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 Don't click send yet. Let's see if there's a couple more that flow in here. Oh, I already sent it. Uh, oh, so. it's sent. Go ahead and vote. <laughs> so vote on that. Um, and just to give a, that's kind of a the majority. I mean, I know there's some people. I saw I saw some Zach uh, Frazier, um, and I, I get that. But here's the majority. That we're just going off of this. Uh, Darius Robinson is dominating this thing. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take okay. the advice of the people. Uh, I honestly I don't have any. If I didn't like oh, the pick, yeah. I would be like, guys, guys, I don't mind it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with it. People have I think that's really me. very realistic, too. We're going with Darius Robinson, oh, Edge out of Missouri. That's my pick. I think he was my line. favorite out of the bunch there. Yeah. I, I, yeah, looking at who's left, it wasn't – I mean, it wasn't a, a ton of guys that – again, there's probably I – mean, Mikey Sanders, so I wouldn't hate, but I, I like the fit with Darius. I do. Yeah. I, I so think people both, have spoken. My bad, Jeff. Keep going. No. That's all I was saying. Oh, I was saying, I think Mikey and uh, you, you boys know I like TJ Tampa. I think both of those guys are somebody that if you want to get, you can trade up in the second round for. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe the Bills or somebody like that takes TJ Tampa. But I, I said I could see Mikey being a first round pick. But realistically, if the Packers or the Cowboys don't take him, I don't see him going to the first round. But I, if he, if he makes it past those two, I don't think he does. But I could still see him going to the Packers and or the Cowboys because they have no safety help. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm happy with it. I mean, you guys got any? I mean, I'll get your guys' thoughts. I mean, what do you think? You don't like it? You like it? Where are you guys at? I, with D-Rob, D-Rob. I love the Darius Robinson. I'm I'm going into the draft thinking that if Darius Robinson's on the board and none of these big time guys are, and you don't trade up and you're just sitting there at 29, Darius Robinson would be the pick. So that would yeah. be my pick. I would have probably scrolled and, and made that same exact pick actually over all these guys. Brian says, yeah, "Why is Rocky Lombardi an option?" Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Lombardi. Oh, what a legend. Well, I mean, right. I, I like the Darius pick, but I you don't love Darius, it. You don't love I would be more I'm more excited to see what Brad does in the second round. Like it's all right, okay. cool. There was a need that he they, they addressed, but I'm I'm not jumping up and down. I just don't think he's ever gonna be elite pass rusher, which is what I think the Lions need defensively to take that next level. What about you, Mike? You cool with it? Yeah, no, that's cool. I'd definitely rather have him over Chop Robinson, and that's probably <laughs> who I would have picked at this, you know, okay. given the players that are left in this mock draft. So I don't mind it. Well, that puts Boone with the Ravens at 30. So there we go, boys. Yeah, they, they got Josh go. Reynolds visiting Boone. Like, where are you where are you at with the with the Ravens? What do they do here? Let me cook a little bit here. I want to make sure I'm doing this this right over here for the people. <laughs> I'm in between two guys right now. All right. Both different sides of the ball here. Okay. Okay. What are you thinking? Roman Wilson? No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. All right. Go. Oh, God. I'm going to give – I'm going to give – what I'm going to do here is I'm going to help Lamar Jackson out a little bit. I believe they might have lost an offensive lineman um, in, in the offseason here, free agency. They did. So they just go lost Marius Morgan Mims. Moses. Yep. So I'll go Marius right. Mims here. I'll, I'll be realistic. I could have gone crazy there and gone wide receiver or gone Chop right. Robinson and gave him to that – that defensive line there, you guys know what that's like in, in, in uh, almost at Philly mm-hmm. in, in Baltimore. I could have done that. I'm going to go uh, Marius Mims out of, what is it, Georgia? Uh, out of Georgia. Yep, yeah, out of Georgia. Georgia. Big dude. He, I mean, yeah, he's like 6'8", I think, 6'7". Uh, they, they lost Morgan Moses, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Old as well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, he's if it's not an offensive God. lineman, the Ravens are going to go offensive lineman, in my opinion, or uh, wide receiver. receiver. So, yeah, one of the two. I would, uh, yeah, but it depends on what they do. But uh, you're up here. This Mr. one's Luke easy for me, boys. I oh, think the 49ers, they they need to address that offensive line. I think if you give Brock Purdy time, he can shred defenses. If you don't give him time, he's not going to do jack shit. So they outside of Trent Williams, they didn't have much. I'm going to go with Graham Barton, the offensive tackle slash guard out of Duke. A lot of Lions fans want him, but I think oh, fitting the 49ers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is he gone? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, he was gone. All right, all right. Address, <laughs> Threw right, me off for a second. I was like, Tyler Guy. Yeah, hey, so then we'll go. Hey, I'll take I wanted accountability. To, to Tampa. Late. Hey, I'll take accountability. I was sleeping there. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna transition. We're gonna go. Zach Frazier, the center out of West Virginia. Oh, okay. Give that. Give them their guy in the interior next to Trent Williams. That is a funny. That is a funny well, that situation. Puts, that puts Mr. Gentry at thirty-two for the final pick to close out the first round here. Yeah. Sorry, Lucas, you have to be quicker than that. But <laughs> for number two in the final pick, the final pick of the crunch time draft, the Chiefs select Lad McConkey. Oh, no! Steal the draft. He drops. He might drop. <laughs> yeah, you might drop. You guys are lucky. Wow. The what a draft. Or Xavier Leggett would be a lion right now. So let me um, let me get this. I'm going to I'm going to should have made him that. an option. Okay, so we got done with our with our first round mock. I'm gonna get get the PNG, and then we're gonna look at it, analyze it. What could we have done better? <laughs> is it still own? Is it still? Is there still an option to see who's on the board? Like who did we like drop? Uh, out of the I'll, I'll give you some rough uh, general general ones. I mean, Keon Coleman was not taken. He was a second round pick. Yep. He's gonna be a second round pick. Xavier uh, Worthy. Keep Xavier, Xavier Worthy. Worthy. Yep. So, some corners. Kamari Lasseter was still there. TJ Tampa was still there. Chop Robinson was still there. So some interesting was it, uh, offensive linemen. Michael I Penix wasn't him. taken at all. Uh, Guyton was still there. Guyton's going to be a guy they someone's going to trade up for and get. Yeah. He's a, he, so uh, a lot of guys that are kind of mocked around the first round that didn't make it. So Graham Barton. Graham, yeah, remember, fuck you. <laughs> 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 all right so let me it put this reach on. all right what Graham? Yeah. Boy, it, it threw me off like, dude, lucas because 24 how was that that was, how was that a reach at 24 yeah that was so, the guy that I, I was gonna take at 26 anyways with tampa and then in gentry two two picks before me snagged him so here's here's the uh the full first round we'll, we'll kind of go through it all right so we we got caleb at one uh jay net two Marv at three was an interesting spin on it because that, that kind of changed up what the Cardinals did. Mm -hmm. Chargers took a tackle. There you go. And then you got six. JJ to the Giants. Booner's brother. So, there, and then there's uh, Brock Bowers to the Titans. That's a good – I've never – I haven't heard it too often. I don't know if it'll happen. I th think of Joel Alts there, but he wasn't. Yeah. So they go Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a that's an interesting one. Dallas Turner – to the Raven, or excuse me, the, the Falcons, not Ravens. Uh, which is a yeah, that's booking. I mean, we <laughs> got we you that. got your birds mixed up there a little bit. Hey, yeah, I, got, I got my birds. <laughs> I took there's not Newton yeah, and just awesome. middle fingered this whole like uh, this whole first top ten draft. I mean, I I'm sorry, I just said fuck it. You know, I I, I you probably could have argued Roma Dunes. A, I mean, I don't know, but I took Drazan, Byron Murphy. But that's what I went. And the Drake May falls to the Jets. I, Boone, I want you to – hey, because look what look what happened. Boone, I want you to cook on this because if you wouldn't have done that, I would have done the exact same thing. So th this is the reason, Adam, in, in the, the draft, and I said it from the start, Lucas – what threw it off was Lucas selecting Marvin Harrison to the Patriots because they're – in my opinion, they're going to take a quarterback. The fact Drake May fell all the way to 10, and if he's sitting there at 10 – the Jets, like, go through their roster. How many holes do they really have, like, for this next year? Really don't have anything that they need to address. They they, they probably can address some positions and upgrade. But Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be there for the next four, five, six years. What we've talked about on this show, fellas, is Drake May potentially could need a year to kind of sit and develop and get better. And that was something that we watched that Dan Orlowski talked about, saying, hey, if Drake May gets time to sit and learn for a year, he potentially could have even be a better quarterback in the right position. If the Jets do have that situation happen to them to where they can get Drake May and put him behind Aaron Rodgers for a season and develop him and that's their quarterback of the future, 
That's that's interesting. That's interesting. And on top of it, too, don't think I would want the Vikings to pick up Drake May as well. So um snagged him before that. But no, seriously, I think that I think that's actually kind of a smart scenario there for the Jets. If if it might probably won't happen, but I think it's a good a good thought to have a little bit. I don't think Drake May even falls to there, though. I think he's a he's a top five quarterback. Yeah, I mean, all I right, boys. Anyone? No, I, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I, I was letting you cook, Bone. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's no. just weird because it's like we're doing the mock, so players are going to be available that typically aren't in other mock drafts. So this was very unique. Yeah. You know, I think you trade. have an argument for the Jets to take a win now player. Like, let's say Tyron Smith gets hurt. How can Drake may help them? You know, I, I, I get right. That. But say Aaron Rodgers thinking- leaves to become the vice president. Who do they have? They have Drake May. <laughs> say he leaves because he he you know gets hurt again. Guess what? You have Drake May. Say after the end of the year he retires because he can't he can't deal with the Jets and the organization. You have Drake May. So it's yep. if he falls to 10, a, a team like the Jets, who have always been looking, they've tried to get Zach Wilson, Sam Darnold, they've been looking for a franchise quarterback for years and years. And they just landed one of the best of all time. At what, how old is he? 39, 38, maybe in his 40s. Yeah. No, I don't even know. He's, 39, he's, 40. he's not there for a long time. And and if mm-hmm. you're if you're a quarter team that wants to have a guy there for a long time and and learn that can sit for a year and sit back and learn, there's no better place for Drake May to go than the New York Jets and learn for a year behind Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest of all time. Well, Ryan asks if Kool Aid and Robinson are there, who's your pick between the two? Darius Robinson or Darius Robinson? I would assume he means Darius. Darius. Okay. Ryan, I'm sorry if I assumed wrong. I would assume he means Darius because we took Darius. Um, but I would just take Kayla or uh, Kool Aid and then trade up for Darius in the second round, early second round, try and go that route. But if the, the, those two are there, I'm taking Kool Aid. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I'm going to go Darius, but I'm not hate. It's a whole different conversation than like. We have with other corners that could be there, like the TJ Tampas or the Lassiters or the Ennis Rakestraw. Like, I don't put Kool Aid in that territory, but I still just fall back on a defensive end is more of a need than a corner right now. I think if you get a Darius Robinson in the second, third round, you get a Max Melton, somebody that degree. I think value wise, that's better value than Kool Aid at 29. I'm I'm in the same second or third. I'm in the same sense, sir. I do think uh, the edge right now is a more valued position for the Lions right right now, and because I, I do think they they bring in a free agent, so I'm I'm going to go Darius, and then I think you, you you pick up a corner in the second third round and kind of go from there. It's interesting to me though, like the Max Mountain thing. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but he he's been moving up a lot, and I saw a mock draft today actually with him going I think at 32. Mm. which I was shocked. So just, I know it's probably not realistic, but just the fact that someone thought of that, and and this is like, I think it was like NFL.com potentially. I think it was the NFL.com that put it out there today, their mock draft that they had him going at 32, just to know that that, that he's kind of on the, like on the board like that. Now, now it kind of makes me, you might have to go Max Mountain in the second round and said it like we were, we've been going in the third. He he might be off the board a lot earlier than we think. We might have to trade up for him. I would, if if I was in this scenario, I would say, it's tough because I, I like both players and I'm like, I'm pro D Rob, but I'm also pro Kool-Aid. If I had, if I had to make a decision, I would choose Kool-Aid because yeah. I, I, think oh. I think he's the better player. Um, just, in, I think based on Brad's ideology, I would take Kool-Aid cause he's it, like, cause to kind of Mike's point. I actually didn't even think of it like that. You could, you could take Kool-Aid. I don't think Darius is going to fly off the board a pick later. Like personally, um, I, so you could you could try and trade up. I think Kool Aid. If you don't take him, he's gone the next two picks. Like that's how I feel about Kool Aid. But I could be wrong. Um, because I don't think. In- I don't see Darius falling past Baltimore. I think if Darius is on the board for Baltimore, losing to Davion Clowney, they're a lot like the Lions, where they like playing man coverage, stopping the run. And you look at the teams that are in that division right now, especially when you get late in the season, you need to stop the run because they already have guys that can get to the passer. You know what I mean? But they just need to keep continuing. I could be wrong. But I think if Darius doesn't go to the Lions, he's a guy that even like the Chiefs, their secondary is fine. If they're like, okay, we'll get a wide receiver in the second or third round, we could have been better against the run. We talked about in the final uh, four for the NFL, like in the NFC and AFC championship, the Chiefs run defense was the worst remaining. So if they want to go and show up that run and you can put somebody next to George Karlaftis and Chris Jones, it's actually viable because they were kind of doing the money the money roll thing where it's just like, all right, we'll put a defensive out here. Well, they just kept the constant rotation. If you get Darius as an instant starter, that makes that defense even better. I Honestly, I would even argue Kool-Aid would be an instant starter. 
I agree. Yeah, 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 for sure. But so, like when you look at it, I, I look at the Ravens secondary, the Chiefs secondary. Yeah, but and you're right. Point, on, honestly, you're before, right about that. If, if Kool Aid's on the board and the 49ers are sitting there, I guarantee the 49ers are taking Kool Aid. I just I think it's hard for both those guys to get out of the first round. Yeah, that's a no, that's, that makes it's probably. I, let, let's be real. I, I would. I mean, if if D Rob's the pick, I the argument I'm I'm like you're you are right. They do need a better pass rush, like bad. Mm-hmm. They do so bad. So. They both fit it's in weird. Eight. It's it's a weird scenario too because what's happened and what's kind of transpired the last week with, with Cam Sutton has changed everything with that. Because if what happened with Cam Sutton happened in the last or did not happen the last week, I think it would be a clear vote. Hey, everyone, let's go Darius Robinson, or maybe we could we could argue a receiver. But like, hey, your need and that was the thing. Like on Monday when we were kind of having these conversations, it was in last week when all this news started popping out about the corners, Lions signing the nor- the corners. It was, hey, now we can just go and attack whatever we need. And the biggest need left on the board was an edge rusher and the defensive line. So that was where it was like Darius Robinson could be that guy. And you started hearing more conversations about Chop Robinson. So that was where, where that kind of conversation. To me, I'm, I'm with Lucas, though. It's just I I value the, ed, the the pass rush right now for the Lions more than I do the corners because you do have some new corners now and Carlton Davis um, as that new number one. So I, I have a little bit more faith in that. Now I would rather just sure up that. I'm I'm a Dar- think about this too, guys. Darius Robinson, he was like projected when we first started covering the draft and doing things before we even went to the combine. I think he was getting mocked at like 23 to like 26. Like he was someone getting mocked earlier than the Lions, to where the Lions would have had to trade up. Now Darius Robinson, and he didn't do anything to hurt his draft stock at the combine and pro days, nothing. He just he if anything, he did he made himself better and people liked him more. It's just there's other guys in this draft that are moving up, and, and there's going to be a chance that the Lions are going to get them. No chance that Darius Robinson, I think, falls out of the first round. So I, I think I think the value-wise, the defensive end, like well, how, I don't know how you guys would tier the defensive ends in this class. I think there's two or three guys at that, that tier one, and then I think Darius Robinson's the very top of tier two to where if you can get a tier two guy at the end of the first, and you probably won't have a chance to get a tier two guy in the second where you're picking. So. That, that's right. I'd put it like, I'd put it like Dallas Turner, Gap, Latu Verse, Gap, Darius Robinson, and then the rest of them. Yeah, yeah I, 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 right. I'm just more so looking at like guys you would trade up for: Dallas Turner, Latu, um, Jared Verse. Like those are guys you would yep. trade up for, and guys you would stay packed or get in the second round. I think Darius Robinson's at the top of that list to where you don't have to move, and I think that list ends. You could say probably in the second round, and then it's. That that's where I'm at with that. So I I think like a corner, Lucas, and we should do some tiers for for these. We should do some tiers because like yeah, corner, I think there's a like again tier one. I'm just saying tier one is like guys you would move up for. I think there's two or three of those guys. Tier two, I think the tier two list for corners might be a little bit bigger than maybe the tier two for DNs. I could be wrong, but I, no, I think I there's a chance you can get a corner in the second round that's in that second tier than you can get a defensive end. Yeah, no, I I think for at least the corners, there's a couple there's a couple guys that are going to go top. I think Kool Aid's somebody that I just like as a guy that it will fall. But I do think when it's all said and done, and I'm not just saying this. I mean, jokes aside, the Kool Aid Honolulu Blue Kool Aid, it's funny. But like as a player, even if his name was John Doe, I mean, I watch Kool Aid, man. He, I, I love I love his tape. I do. So you know, and the injury is a real thing. I get that. Um, so if he's there for the Lions, I'm I'm completely cool with it. Like Kamari Lasseter too. Booner, you are correct about that tier two, where there's going to be some good corners, man, that you look back and that get drafted in round two yep. that are, are some of the best in the class, in my opinion. I want to ask you guys, let's get a little controversial, all right? Okay. Let's just let's get to it. We did our mock. Is there any pick that you don't like or doesn't make sense? Let's just let's just do it. Because yeah, yeah, and yeah. then we can explain it. We can explain it. All right, Lucas. What's up? Pick number 17, Nate Wiggins. God awful value. I think I think we just we just talked about Kool-Aid McKinstry. Five, seven days out of seven, 365 days out of the year, even on leap year, Kool-Aid McKinstry is a better corner than Nate Wiggins. That man's a walking this man got hurt running a 40-yard dash. What do you think is gonna happen when he tries to tackle an NFL running back? It's not gonna turn out well. It's hey, I get it. Position of need is corner. That's just probably the last guy out of the consensus first round corners I take. Fair. Uh, <laughs> what I will say is, when you look, when you look, when you look back, watch Nate Wiggins. You can bring up the weight, okay? 
you can bring up the weight. And that's obviously a problem when it comes to tackling because he has to gain weight. But as what he does in coverage, I I, I just think in, in terms of him and Kool-Aid, with his speed, with his athleticism, I do think there's higher upside there. And they just need it. You could take Kool-Aid. I honestly wouldn't be mad at that um, because, again, I don't believe in – there's a certain – over if you overdraft a player, you really got to overdraft him. Like Kool Aid at seventeen to me is not an overdraft. I, I wouldn't hate it. I I just think Nate Wiggins, like all jokes aside, he's gonna go top twenty. You know what I mean? He's gonna you know, go top twenty. You can you think, oh, he looks like me. He's going top twenty, Lucas. Someone's taking Nate Wiggins. If not, he'll go to the Eagles probably at twenty two. Do you guys right remember now. Kevin King, the cornerback from Washington that the Packers took with like thirty third overall, and everybody's like, that's high value, that's a steal. He's gonna have the same trajectory as Kevin King. Watch, Kevin King. Wasn't Kevin King like six three too? He was like, huge. yeah, like they're 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 not built the same, but just watch, it'll be the same. Where it's just like this guy, everybody, everybody's gonna be like, that's a good pick, that's a good pick, great value, and then he's just not gonna show up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I did. I just don't see it. Hey. He he will never play more than fifteen games in his career. Never. Really? That's I wild. Know. Wow. Wild pick. Mark that down. Wow. Let's keep. And we He's should we should start like a be... book that has all of our our statements like that one because <laughs> that's that that's like a big one. But I'm I'm with Lucas though. I'm hey, I'm, I'm on Lucas. Hey, unless, uh, hey, unless he's like you. cornerback three. That's a big unless one. Unless he's like cornerback three. But that's like, you're either as a guy a that's not going to be playing your full season or. He's just going to be kind of I washed mean, down. You're taking that 17th overall? No, thank you. I mean, I'll ask. I, I I'll agree ask. with Lucas on that. Yeah. I mean, and he's had some. That thing about Nate Wiggins is there's there's some questions. I mean, you look at the games against Xavier Leggett and Keon Coleman. Like, he definitely didn't shut those guys down. So, I get that. I, I To me, it was more about position. If you prefer Kool-Aid, that's fair. Yeah. But I do think they'll draft a corner. Uh, that's, yeah. that's how I feel. But maybe it's Kool-Aid, though. Adam Baydoon brings up his problem. Who the fuck drafted Drake May? He already addressed I mean, How many times listen. do we have to address your comments, you gotta, Adam? You listen. Open if you're going to – If you're going to – Adam. Thank you. Rewind. Rewind. And you can hear his explanation. All right? If you're going to make comments, at least stay to listen to them. He probably just did it again. He probably just commented again and then just left. And then now he's not listening again. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Lucas, you got your – I tried to address as best I could. That's fair. Yeah. All right. I, I can't – I. You're not a big Nate Wiggins guy. I get that. anybody Anybody else have anything in here that they don't? They they they're like, what the hell is this guy doing? Besides Drake I've got, May I've and got Nate one. Wiggins. Okay. Go ahead, um, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to uh, that third spot over there, Marvin Harrison. <laughs> uh, we can we I can do, get into it, Boone. I I think I don't know if it's like I, I get what you're saying. I'm more. I don't know. I think like if they're I'm gonna ready. Go wide I'm receiver, ready for this debate. I'm ready. If you, I think if if we want to go wide receiver, and I know we can't trade, and we can't trade back or anything like that yeah. in this. I just don't see at number three, like I don't see it. I I I, I don't see them going Marvin Harrison Jr. I I, I can't. So 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 you see you see him having Drake May throwing the ball ball to Demario Douglas. You, as his no, wide but, one. but to your they point, maybe they trade back. Stevenson there. Maybe they trade back, get another wide receiver in this draft, and still get a quarterback. But just Drake. not addressing anything. I just can't see. Or, or, or if you're if you're sitting there at number three with Drake May and JJ McCarthy on the board, you know how much value that is to some of these teams that are trying to jump the New York Giants, or, or they're trying to jump here. up. I, I, I get that. That's why I, I just don't think it happens at three. If they, if they stay if at they three, stay there, they go Drake May. If, if they, they were to stay there, that is the smartest pick long term for the Patriots, without a doubt. Because if they stay now you, there. They're staying at quarterback. The only reason they would stay is to take a quarterback. Yeah, I agree with you, but we're not trading. And I don't think Marvin Harrison fall right. like he's going to Arizona the next pick. So what's the best pick for the Patriots? That gives you so much more flexibility because you're not locking into a quarterback in a bad situation. You're still keeping your quarterback room open. You can take a Michael Penix. You can take a Sam Hart. Name it. I don't Ooh, think they're as good as those other quarterbacks, but you're keeping your window flexible instead of going all in year one. Trade back, or I mean, obviously stay you there. More, but. Stay there, take Bone or not. Almost said Bone Nicks. Take Drake. <laughs> oh <May>. no! <laughs> At number three, Bone Nicks jumps to three. That'd be crazy. Take take Drake May. And when's their when's their second? What are they picking the second round? Probably like 33, 34. I don't and, know. And draft Xavier Leggett and see, move on. That's why it's not. I see. I see your thinking. I just disagree. <laughs> that was the only one, and that wrong, pick just messed wrong. everything up. That pick forced me to have to go Drake May at 10. Here, 
<laughs> Here's my thing. All right. What are we doing here? All right. Which one? Roma Dunze. Let me ask you something. All right. It's not it's not the player, but let me let me pitch something to you, Mike. All right. You're Sean Payton. Let me pitch something to you, Sean. All right. Mr. Sean Payton. We did meet Sean, you, so we can you shout out. you do realize you don't have a pick to the third round. All right. There it is, so I, so I think <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think they have a second round pick. They don't. So if you don't draft your quarterback, you're fucked. And you have Jared Stidham on the roster. So is Jared Stidham the future? What, what's going yeah, on here, true. Mike? Talk Jared to me. Stidham. Jared Stidham <laughs> is the future. No, honestly, <laughs> at this point in time, I, I I was hoping Drake May or one of those other quarterbacks dropped me. I just cannot get by picking Bo Nix at that 12th pick. I think there's so many values. <laughs> value around other positions i would just avoid it at all costs and kind of figure out the quarterback after and kind of like how lucas said earlier about the patriots it's not like they're a player away i don't think if you insert a quarterback on the broncos next year they're going to do you know like fantastic they're making the playoffs i picture them to be right around the same spot next year so okay. kind of just address it later and you take a superstar wide receiver for the future it's fair what would, would you guys either of you guys I, have drafted drake may at 11 or 12 Oh, yeah. I the, took him I, out that, that's what I was going to do. I was, at 12 sure. I was just making sure. I was making I'll sure. say yeah. right now, book it. The Broncos are taking a quarterback. I'll bet everything I have that they're taking a quarterback. you think it's Penix or Knicks? If Knicks. you had to pick one, Bo Nix. Knicks. Knicks. They had, they have, yeah. I think they'd take Bo Nix as well. I think either the Vikings or the Broncos both go quarterback no matter what, and they go Bo Nix. Yeah, you know they, what the Broncos need to do? They need to trade for Clayton Toon. <laughs> Take Roma Dunze, roll out Stop there with Clayton right Toon. <laughs> Stop it right now. Clayton Toon. I was going to oh, say. Come on. come on. Spencer Rattler, 12th overall. The one I was going to say, I didn't have a problem with it, like, because of how late you got him, but it was Bo Nix at, what was it, 23 or 24? Oh, you already took it down. Wow. Oh, my bad. Because, I mean, if he's Vikings. already dropping that round, they have, what, I think like two or three third-round picks they could probably just trade back into the second and take – obviously, at that pick right there at 23, they probably take the best offensive lineman, and then you trade down and mm -hmm. take Penix or Bo Nix. That's the only thing. But I don't have a problem because, I mean, maybe they like Bo Nix and getting him at 24 when he was supposed to go at 12 to the Broncos or, or earlier to the Vikings, you know, yeah. maybe. Who knows? Yeah, well, that doesn't fit my narrative, Mike. That's Simply fair. put. Spenmo <laughs> says Cooper BB at 29 or I'll port this channel for Frost. <laughs> <laughs> that man loves Cooper BB. Cooper, Cooper BB is a dog, dude. His yeah, he, I, I'm I, with you, but I, at 29, we why? A uh, uh, highlight tape of a guy like Cooper BB, like if you have that as an offensive lineman, the one that he did, you're elite. I love, I love it. The man was taking on two hey. two people at the same time. Great, great player, but. The offensive line compared to defensive end Booner, I don't think it's close. Marcus Davenport trotting out there, I will no, I'd be nauseous, yeah, nauseous. That, if it was, yeah, you I'm got me stop sick before I take it personal. <laughs> you know, well, calm myself down, fellas. How, how about this, Lucas? Does this make you sick? A little Xavier Howard, you know, this is interesting. Xavier, okay, Xavier Howard. So it says news former Dolphins all pro cornerback Xavier Howard. Sorry, Mike, I'm covering you up with the message. Uh, all pro cornerback Xavier Howard will be open to taking less money in order to join a contender via the Houston Chronicle. Clotsy. Talk to me, Clotsy. <laughs> I, I just feel like it's so like slap. You'd be like, yeah, bring Xavier Howard home. But if we're being realistic, I, he's an upgrade. But then we go to the conversation. Would I rather have Xavier Howard or Stefan Gilmore? If you're talking about what the Lions like to do, who's a better man-to-man -man corner is Stefan Gilmore. So if they bring, bring in Xavier Howard, I'd be all for it, but I just don't think it's a reality. I think if they were to, they would have probably already addressed that, especially when you're trading assets to go get a guy like Carlton Davis. Obviously, different points in their career, but both outside corners. I'd rather have Stefan Gilmore, but I'm not going to be mad with Xavier Howard because he, at cornerback two, compared to what the Lions had last year at cornerback two and Kendall Vildor, that's a hell of an upgrade. That's a hell of an upgrade. So I'm all for it. I just don't think it's happening. I wonder what the price would be. Same. I think there's conversations. I I I, I don't think Brad's going. If he sees that and Brad hears this, zero chance Brad doesn't make a phone call and say, "Hey, what's the price? What do you want to do? We're, we're a contender now. We, we, you're we're a team that people want to come win. We, we we just had what happened with Cam Sutton. We obviously have have an opening here. 
I I like Xavier Howard. I know he's a, a little bit of a dip last year, and he, and he yeah. you know, so I get that you're you're only as good as what you've done for me lately. That's how the NFL works. So last year wasn't great, but we know what prime Xavier Howard looked like. If he can come here and and play at least you know 60, 70 percent of that, he's one of your best corners. So I, but mm-hmm. again, I think they should sign a veteran and draft a corner. I, but the veteran, I'm having a hard time figuring out who that is, though, guys. Like, I don't know if is it is it Xavier, is it Stefan? It's you know, Stephane hey, Spenmo, is it is it Will Harris? Spenny, <laughs> Spenny, you know, you know, do we need to block him for a couple? Of, like, this, 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 oh, he's a he's a wrench. We can't. Hey, he's he's a wrench. Trust me, uh, but, a wrench. <laughs> well, Will Harris. definitely inside the, the gin bottle right now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> not with yeah. joy not joey hey not but football, xavier joey. howard where he really would if he were to be signed here he would in the red zone as far as man-to-man defense just because he is like six three six two we talk about tj tampa that's my nfl comp for tj tampa so if you can bring in a veteran tj tampa with everything you want justin jefferson Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, a lot of these guys would have a tough Woo! time in the red zone compared to even like Amik Robertson because we love Amik. But the man's 5'9". He's not the most experienced DB. I mean, Xavier Howard has the frame of a cornerback one. He's not that cornerback one that he was, but he still has a lot of that experience, and he has some intangibles left. But people that are like Amik Robertson at CB2, like it's an upgrade from Vildor, but that's one of those things where you're you're on a slippery slope because he's going to have to take a lot of chances being 5'9", guarding Keenan Allen, Romeo Dobbs, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. Like he's always going to be a little bit behind the eight ball, in my opinion. I'm with Lucas on that. The Meek Robinson CB2 thing. I'm not I'm not for that. Maybe he does at some point. He's still pretty young. Maybe at some point he gets to a point where he can do that. But again, I'm I'm with Jack. I think this whole show is on the same page. Go get a veteran corner and draft someone so you can learn. Like you have to you have to do that. I think Xavier Howard is on the board here. And I think there's an there's a chance Brad Holmes goes and gets him or Stefan Gilmore. I'm I bet you in the last 24 hours, if I had to go look at Brad Holmes call log. There's a call to Miami, and there's a, so wherever Xavier lives now, wherever there's a call to him, and there's a call to <laughs> Stefan Gilmore and, and his agent. So I, th- I think there's going to be someone that's coming here for, out of free agency to Detroit. I'm not going to sit here and say a Meek Robertson as our CB2 like that. I'm not I'm not settling for that. I hope he can get to that point at some time, but I'm not, no, going into the air. Shout out Spamo Rack Speaks, too. Thank you. <laughs> no, Amik's a really good cornerback nah, three. I don't nah, nah. put him on that cornerback two I'm level yet. That. And I think we're all on the same page. You kind of get a veteran and then address another corner in the draft. So I mean, okay, can we just cut the can we just cut it? Let's just get right to it. I mean, Amik, I love listen, Amik. I love it, dude. He's got that dog in him. Dog. He's a dog. Uh, you can't you just can't teach height, man. Yeah. He's he's so he's just small. And that's again. He plays bigger. He needs. He always. He's talked about it in his press conference when he got to the Lions. I, you know, I've always had to compensate for that, and it, I think that's something Dan kind of loves because he just he's got that dog in him. Yeah, but he can't help that he's five nine. Like th- this man is not your number two corner. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew that. You need like a veteran, and I don't know, preferably a, a corner of your draft. So I love Amik, but he's more of a guy you kind of, you know, work in there. Uh, to me, yeah. I just a CB2 with a meek is just not ideal. I think we can all agree there. It's just not, yeah. No. Like, like if Carlton Davis or something misses a game and he's got to step up to that CB2 Ooh. or CB, we're like, well, I'm, I'm going to live through it for a game, but it's not something you want to see on a season basis because at the end of the day, he is 5'9, but he was Vegas's number one corner and he was on the outside traveling with the number ones a lot, not all the time, but in some games. So I think he's somebody that can handle it situationally, but over the course of a season, yeah, it's. That, that's barbecue chicken. Barbecue Spot chicken. Spot on. I had some barbecue so, chicken today. Yeah, what's going on? Uh-huh. What's, what's going on? I'm telling you, Penny's Penny. definitely dabbling in the gin right now. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh. More sacks for the Lions. Bets are dabbing. Yeah, oh, hold on. Drinking the Hendrix <laughs> right now. Derek Barnes against Dallas in the end zone to for a safety. We'll have more sacks than Marcus right. Davenport. Really? And Matthew, that's combined. Wow. Jesus. Well, wow. Lucas is a, a bit of a hater. Come on, Davenport will have Matthew, a couple. The old Matthew Betts. What are we doing? Do we do we lose Lucas? Lucas, are you there? See, that's what happens when you go at Matthew Betts and Marcus Davenport. That's exactly Lucas, what happens. Lucas is like, 
Oh, there you go. There we go. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Whenever I move, I was confused. I didn't know if I was in the stream or not, and then I came back full screen. It was, so, it was Marcus Davenport came in. <laughs> Get this guy yeah, out of here. Thanks. You guys, you guys ready for some some fan mocks? Let's fucking do it. All right. We alternate. We're gonna it. we're gonna do wide open for fan mocks. Uh, last Friday we did members only. We'll probably do members only next week. Uh, next Friday, this week we're opening it up. We we put a tweet out uh, on our on our Twitter or X, and the people were sending some mocks. So we're gonna we're gonna get to it. And we're gonna react to some of these. The first one comes from. I'm gonna make sure I give credit here. Uh, Gib season. Gib season on X. So we're gonna we're gonna pull this one up. You're gonna give your thoughts on it, and we'll give a grade. All right, let's do it. First one. Pull up. Speaking of the man, oh I, guys, you know wow. I don't even care about any of these picks. They got McGregor, Braden McGregor. <laughs> they got Frank Gore Jr. They got Will Wright. Get over dogs. No, but uh, in all seriousness, they got Cooley McKinstry. No trades. I, I appreciate it. Less less complicated. Um, but you got Kool-Aid McKinstry at 29, Cooper Bebe at 61, Christian Boyd. I hear a lot of good things about him, man. Lions like him a lot. Northern Iowa, defensive lineman. Braden McGregor. Uh, Joshua C- – okay, relax. It's Joshua Cephas, wide receiver. Frank Gore Jr., running back, and then Will Ricard. I actually – guys, if this I'm, happened – You're, you're in on this? Yeah, I'm going to be real. I would prefer an edge higher. Mm-hmm. But – you know, that would be my only critique, you know. Yeah, I agree. I like That's the Kool Aid McKinstry I, again. If I would, I would prefer uh, Darius Robinson. But if they do draft Kool Aid, I'm I'm fine with that. Cooper Beebe obviously is a big time having him come in. That's that's your like first guy off the bench if someone gets injured. Um, mm-hmm. Christian Boyd, Braden McGregor, Joshua Cephas. I don't know if I've seen any film on Joshua Cephas. Have we spoke about him? I don't think I've watched anything. No, I don't. I'm not even hip to him. That's so a class interested- guy, and if he doesn't know him, we're fucked. Yeah, that so I don't be, know about that. Maybe yeah, I'd rather cool. a different wide receiver, maybe some uh, more defensive line depth. Frank Gore Jr. I'm fine with, um, and Will Richard. I I need to watch some more more Will Richard tape there. I've seen him. I've seen him play. It's obviously, Riker. It's Riker. Riker. Yeah, I like Richard better. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> no, I, I again kicker. I would rather have my uh, Booner Jr. out of Harrison uh, Mavis. Yeah. Yes, Harrison Mavis. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank Low bro. That's, Low bro. Yeah, baby Booner. <laughs> Low brother. Brother. <laughs> all right Listen so brother. what grade would we give this guys give it a grade uh, i'll go b i'll go b, b plus I, i'm with you boone i'll go b because i'll go b minus. A if I'll be a, a, dickhead a little bit i i i don't like the defensive end in the fourth round i think you got to do that in the first two rounds oh fuck yeah. you i would agree with that hey, you just don't right. like him because he went to michigan hey that yeah, could that's... be true i like chris jenkins bring chris jenkins home all right that's, that's fair. fair that's fair uh the next one we got it is right from up. austin Austin, we appreciate you. He's on Twitter. Shout out Austin. And he sent us his mock. Here it, here it is. Let me put it on screen for you guys. Wow. Wow. I hate, they, I hate the Johnny Newton thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird. not it's pro, football. pro football. They have it as Johnny. Yeah. It's kind of ruining it. For so long. It just, yeah. I don't know why. Just, it, I'm just going to say it's it, It's just racist. I don't know why. It just feels racist. <laughs> it's just on. All right, it's not Johnny. Weird. Uh, <laughs> it's <racist. laughs> I don't know why. It's just a feeling I have. It feels racist. <laughs> Love you, Spenny. Um, but, but Johnny Newton, whatever, yeah. Jerzon. That's how. Uh, but he they, he falls to twenty nine. I think we're all on board there. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. Can I ask you guys where you guys feel about the Jerzon Newton thing now? Because we do have DJ Reader and Ali McNeil now, and he's basically like a nose tackle, correct? But so where where does he fit in now? That that's a serious yeah, question. But- I'm, if that boy's sitting there at 29, I, you that I are do, you going to be complaining? I do, I do get that, but if you're just not getting him any like reps and you, and he's not, I guess because Here's DJ Reader's on a one year well, deal. Well, you look at Here. you look at Philly with they got Fletcher Cox, they got Jordan Davis, they got Jalen Carter. They they make it work. You put a yeah, lame out a little bit on the outside, rotation. you bring down a linebacker. All right, fair. You convinced me. All right. You got I, I, you boys got me. I just I, I was just thinking of it. I was just that was just like my only biggest I, we haven't talked about that since we've gotten DJ Reader. When I look at this and think like fit, maybe you're like, what? 
but also if Brad's taking BPA, I think you can make a case Jerzon's the best. And then Mikey's the would be the best player at 61, you could argue. So like I get it. Like Mikey's a slot corner, Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton. He's a three tech defensive tackle. He, he would be a guy that maybe it, it I mean, hell, Ali McNeil, he's got a year left on his deal. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's a future was, stash. Maybe DJ was, Reader goes down. You got Jerzon. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's, that was a question I had um, for some of the people we had on this week was, and we never weren't able to get to it, but Ali McNeil, he could be extended right now. And that, like they haven't had gotten any extensions done. And Aleem is one that's due yeah. for an extension as well. So I was interested in the fact that Aleem hasn't been extended. Amin Ra hasn't. No one's been extended yet. So that is another we, – we should have that conversation on Monday. What grade would you give it, boys? I'm going to go, go C+. Plus. B again. B minus. Yeah, this I, one I, I'm going to go C plus just because uh, the last one I liked a little better. But this one, I, I I just, again, it's better players. I just, for fit reasons, I'd like, again, maybe you can say B minus. I'm cool with that too. I'll go B minus. But uh, I like the other one a little better. I don't love the Luke McCaffrey pick at 73. <laughs> I, I don't. And I'm a Luke McCaffrey guy. Like, I just think, like, there's going to be better receivers. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> let's let's get to, <laughs> let's get to the, uh, the next that one is- here. He is on. He is yeah, on one today. He is wiling right now. All right, <laughs> love you, Spenny. I miss him, man. He's a good. All ghost. right, let's get let's get to the next one, boys. This comes from Ooh. Derek. All, All right, right Derek, well, we're, we're in get, better Luke McCaffrey range now. I can yeah, say Kool-Aid that. McKinstry at twenty nine. Jonah Ellis at sixty one. Kieran, uh, a mega yep. a mega DG, a, a, a mega maybe DG, whatever. Kieran, we'll say, uh, Kieran. At 73, Luke McCaffrey in the fifth round. Frank Gore Jr., Tanner Bordellini, center in the sixth. This is interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. And then you got Jarius Monroe in the seventh. This one, I'm going to be honest, it's like a weird – I can see this. I don't know why. (laughs) Like, I can see, like, Brad doing some shit like Tanner Bordellini in the sixth and Frank Gore. You're like, what is going on? Like, what what are you arguing? What do you guys think? I, I think like every I draft love- we have has Frank Gore in it now. Yeah, I was about to say that <laughs> every, too. <laughs> every draft that goes to the sixth round, if they're not just doing the first three picks or whatever it is, it has Frank Gore in it no matter what. But I, I think like it's always the- Frank Gore Jr. I know it is. <laughs> it was always. It was I, always I like him, the, man. I like the Kool-Aid and Jonah Ellis combo. I think Jonah Ellis is one of that. those guys that he doesn't have the highest ceiling, but he has a really high floor. If you watch him at Utah – he was one of the guys that just held it down for that defense. Utah is a defensive-led team. They haven't had a bad defense in probably the last five to six years. And you look at what he did over the last two seasons, he's been really productive for him. So I love that in the second round. I'm, I'm a Jonah Ellis guy as well. Like, again, corner, edge in the first two rounds. If you get that, that's, that to me, a little spot on. Obviously, some people want wide receiver. Um, I think getting a Luke McCaffrey in the fifth round kind of makes up for that a little bit to where you can – maybe he's not a fifth-round guy, but – I think he's someone who's going to be able to come in and learn and, and kind of get into a different role. I don't know, Kieran. I don't know want to pronounce his name. I wanted to hear Jeff pronounce that name. Um, <laughs> to be honest, oh, I was I hoping think, you would. It's got to be. I think it's Kyron Omega DG. I think you had the last name right, Jeff. Spot uh, I think I think you Kieran. messed up on the first name more than the the, the last name. What are you guys' thoughts on tackle then? I, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I don't like the Jonah Ellis pick. I don't like. Well, I'm not. How a, come? Just because a couple. Of re, no, not that it's an. I like the edge. I get that. I would take Nealon personally. Um, yeah. I just think Jonah's a little small. He's like six two. And he's, a bit, he's fucking. He's, he's yoked, big though. though. He's big, yeah. but like. Oh, this is gonna sound bad, but like. <laughs> Matthew Sad. Beth is also 6'2", all right? So, <laughs> oh, hey, 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 hold on, time out. Man, Jeff you know, is just on, calm down. I'm not a hater. I'm not saying uh, What are we ass, doing I'm here? I'm not saying he's not ass. <laughs> I, I, Jonah Ellis at Utah, I mean, Pac-12, no one's got offensive lines for the hell of it anyway. I mean, it, like, what are we I, – I'm not in love with it. I'm not in love with it, but I don't, I don't hate it. I like the other picks, though. I don't, I don't know about – Jarius Monroe. Um, I'd rather have a kicker at that at that point, or maybe you figure out a way to get a kicker. But yeah. Um, did you yeah. forget they brought the money badger back? Oh gosh. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Rethink that pick. Lucas, Lucas, <laughs> Lucas, <laughs> Lucas. That's, right, that's on me. Yes, they brother. Better yeah. they, be they better draft a kicker, brother. I'm, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you, Boone. I'm with you. But yeah, it's, the back, it's the backup money badger. It's not to replace him. It's no, it's so, just to so we compete can make with, that clear. Yeah, he's going to hold it. with the money badger. Compete yeah. with him. He, he can Honey learn badger, under the money badger's up. wing. Yep. I'll eat him up. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Honey badger. <laughs> barbecue chicken. Yeah, barbecue chicken. No, yeah. Honey barbecue badger. 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 Barbecue I badger. guarantee you right now, Honey Badger will probably, if if they draft, it depends how high they take a kicker, but I can just see Honey Badger getting cut before the season even starts. Like, I'm <laughs> serious. <now>. 100%. <laughs> 100 percent. imagine if they went with the route again hey let's bring riley patterson back and that's the kicker battle again somehow some way and then the same thing happens because wasn't no. that basically the year be oh maybe the year before wasn't it the same something similar wasn't riley Pat patterson there to start the year and he ended up with the jags during the playoffs um like i'm pretty sure it's like back-to-back yeah. -back years that it's been the money badger and riley patterson and then going into this year it was the same exact thing same battle and then they ended up with both of them for half of the year, one one each. Just unbelievable. Why can't we, Brad? Why can't we figure this position out? Do I? It's, well, it's, like, in there. it's like corner for him. He he loves the kicker None. position, but it's hard just to lock one in. Yeah, because it, it's it's so easy to miss the corner and the kicker, the most important position in football. Every well, we'll single go. every single contender seems to always have a good kicker. Everyone, like, name me a contender in the last five or six years that has not had a really good kicker to where you know you. Oh, we're throwing them out there. We're getting a free three points here. I name me one, someone. Maybe there's one or two. Maybe the the Buccaneers with them trying to think of who their kicker was. was no, like they had a good kicker for the. They they, they did. had a kicker. They did. Their they kicker did. was elite. I'm just trying to think. Who did he the like, did it. Who did the Rams have? Matt Gay. He was a dog yeah. too. They had a dog, dude. I'm telling you, and that's why when people are like, "Oh, Booner, you don't need one. no." When look at the Super Bowl last year, it was a kicking battle basically, and and it wasn't really like they wanted to kick. It was, hey, they needed points, and they went out there and and they got them. So I'm I, go get a kicker. It, it's not even that. And someone said a Badgley is solid. He is solid, but it just let's just get some competition in there. That's a position we haven't been very good at. Now that we're contenders and going for a Super Bowl, get someone in there to compete with the Honey Badger, and let's try and get new. Uh, let's try and get someone who can kick fifty yarders, forty <laughs> yarders. When you get to a certain spot, you know you're able to lean on that if you need to because you need some points. Well, hold on. He said he's solid. I mean, boys, shit is solid. He just, so he, like, let's he, he like, just he just uh, can't kick outside eighty forty yards. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. What are we? There's a lot of things that are solid. I mean, you could you could argue. I, I don't know. I'm not. He, yeah, I guess you could say solid. I mean, he, he played decent towards the end of last year, but I mean, I I would love for someone to do some homework and find me some contenders that have bad kickers. Let's see how many how many of that can. I mean, it's a it's a good are. point. I mean, the 49ers just drafted theirs. Uh, Chiefs have a dude. Yep. The Rams had a good Eric kicker. Not. Ravens got a good kicker. Bills got a good kicker. Eagles signed their kicker. Cowboys have a good kicker. Yeah, Cowboys got a good, kicker. a good kicker until. <laughs> was yeah, still yeah, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're well, right. No, no. He, like he, he, he is one. like historically, he like his career in Buffalo. Like he has been a good kicker. Like imagine yeah, yeah. trying to kick in Buffalo in November, December. Like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Football no, he, probably feels like a bowling ball. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big miss too. Brutal, um, dude. Yeah, it's honestly, Boone. It is a great point. I'm not, you know what? I'm proud of you because you made me think there. It made me think there, and I was like, holy shit, he's right. Yeah. Thank you. There's a lot of – you need a kicker, man. Like – and and those – I mean, I and again, you – some of them are found through free agency, too. I mean, I don't know who's still out there or what, what they can do. Well, it's not that – uh, for Dan to take the points, you could still be aggressive. It's just you know you have that. Like, you know that you can lean back, and, and if you're sitting there and you need a 50-yard field goal, you have a guy that can do that. Right now, you do not have that. And if you get into a game to where three points is is more important than just going for a fourth down, that then that's like you need to have that trust factor because there are situations in the NFL to where whether you think it's aggressive or not, three points will get you a win. And if you yeah. don't have that, then that's an issue. Like what if there's five seconds left of the game and you're at the, the 40 and, and you just don't have someone to do it and, you, and there's five seconds left and you – now you just have to try and kick a field goal and you're probably going to get a miss out of the honey badger or you have to try and go for a touchdown in the Hail Mary. There's just scenarios in the NFL where you need that trust factor from your kicker to stay in games and to stay contending 
And, and that's like a make that can make or break your season. If you get in the playoffs and you run into that scenario where you need a 50 yard field goal to win it or tie it, and, and you just don't have a kicker that can do it, that's a problem. That, that's a very that's a hard problem. Well, I tried. Oh, Lucas, I tried. Hmm. Brandon McManus. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring that up. You were pounding the table for Brandon hey, McManus. Hey, hey, hey. You were pounding the table. Hey, hey, 11 of 13 from 40 to 49. All right. <laughs> All right, what do you do for the no, no, Jags no. this year? Don't you scoff to that, Mister? <laughs> I'm okay with Badgley. I think Badgley's solid. Well, you he, he he was is. solid. Yeah, well, okay, that's fair. But I'm saying, McManus I don't think people game. realize we don't win that wild card game without Michael Badgley, guys. <laughs> that's you think true, guys. Damn, right? I just don't, don't think people realize how many times Dan's had to go for it because we don't have a kicker. And there's times I'm sure if you so. asked him, he would have kicked a field goal over going for it. That's a fact. That, that's just like a cold, hard yeah. fact. That's like there, there are definitely times you can't sit here with a straight face and sit here and throw analytics and numbers because you could say, oh, Badgley is this percentage 40 plus or 45 plus. Guess what? He's not kicking them a lot. So, yeah, his percentage better be higher because he's never kicking them because they don't trust him to do that. So, like, the percentages to me just don't – those don't matter to me. Like, when people are like, well, from 40-something – what was it, with the 43-yard line in the San Fran game? Yeah. And then people are like, well, he's this percent from 40 – guess what? He's from 45-plus. Guess what? He's from 50-plus. And, and and the the numbers are – the attempts are lower because they don't trust him to do it. That's just, a, a, again, a cold, hard fact. This isn't – like, I'm not pulling anything out of thin Wrong. air. These are just Wrong. all facts. I mean, yeah, Matt, Michael Badgley this season, I mean, he didn't didn't attempt a bunch. Um, I mean, he was in four games, um, but still, I mean, you look at what he did. Um, his longest field goal was from 41, but they don't really – I mean, the, this is not what Dan had done, maybe because they don't trust him. But like, I wonder, guys, I'm – you know, the big, like a side story I'm, su- I'm very excited for, when they get a kicker and when they get a defense, what's Dan going to do? It's like a, in the most, I mean this in the most like friendliest way possible, like the most genuine way, but it's like a crackhead and there's just a crack pipe sitting right there and he's just got clean. <laughs> you got he everything got, you need. It's ready to go. You like, you, you know, he's like, he just got clean and he's just looking at this crack pipe like, oh God, it's right there. <laughs> like, like, I like, Dan, <laughs> like, I think Dan is going to be like, oh, we got a good defense. Like I got clean. We got a good kicker. And he's like, oh God, we're in a playoff game. Like. And there's a button. He's like, Shh, sh-. the eighty nine like, Vegas memories are flying back to him. Yeah, the hotel room. The and nice he's like, ah, I, 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 but if you think about it, if we go for it, it doesn't work. Our team. I just do it once. I just do it once. I don't gotta do it again. Just one time. <laughs> <laughs> just one time. It's like I, I won't get addicted if I do it one time. That's what I think, Dan. I'm gonna be honest. I got this feeling Dan's gonna be Dan no matter what the hell you got. And maybe I, I'm wrong. But I agree with you. Like, Booner, I, I do agree to the fact that maybe you would have considered it more. But when you're talking inside the 40, I think Dan is just – and we don't see it a lot out of coaches, but I think it's like we've got this far, we're putting the ball in the end zone. And I think that's just that's just his mentality as a former player, especially the tight end where it's like you're you're willing your way down the field because you might not catch a pass for the next four games, but you got to block. So it's like you got to earn your way down the field. And once you do that, running the ball, you're setting the tone. You want to finish it off with seven. So whether it's right or wrong, I just think at the end of the day, that's Dan's DNA. There might be a couple of times, like around like the 45 to 50, where he's like, all right, it's it's fourth and seven, let's kick. But when you talk about like even like the 40s and like inside the 30, if it's like fourth and three and Dan's at the 30-yard line, you could have Justin Tucker back there. I think Dan's going for it because <laughs> I, I think I think Michael Badgley would be fully capable inside of Ford Field of hitting a 40-yard field goal. But Dan just kept going for it, kept going for it, kept going for it. And I yeah. it might it might lessen a little bit, but I don't think as dramatic as some people might think. So like Michael Badgley in his two years in, in Detroit, he he's nine for eleven in 40 to 49. But what I don't think people realize is that's really just like 40 to 43, 44. And that like there's nothing yeah, plus not 45. Thinking. He's had one, I think, 50 yard field goal. And I can double check real quick. Oh, in, in 2022, he had he was two for three and 50 yards. Last year, he was 0 for 0. So he had two for three, 50 plus, probably indoors. Again, it's just the, the, you you're lying to me if you don't think it's partially a trust factor because they basically have come out at points and said that that it's hey like yeah we do understand like it's tougher for him 
Like there, there was the game winner. Wasn't there a game winner? Or um, oh, what was it? There, there was something a couple years a couple years ago with him that he he missed a kick and it was like a big time kick and it was a a, a far. I think it was a Vikings actually. I could be wrong, um, but where that happened. So it's just these scenarios to where I get what you're saying, Lucas. But again, if you have a guy like a Justin Tucker, I know he's the best in the league, one of the best ever. But I'm just, I get what you're a, a viable example, kicker. Yes, that you can just you have in the back of your head. I I could trust him. Or hey, if we do need this, yeah. let's do this, and, and 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 let's. This is a different scenario. You're just yeah. giving yourself different scenarios to help win games and give yourself a better percentage. Because when you're in the playoffs and you're contending, or you're in a Super Bowl, like I'm dead serious, guys. If we're in a Super Bowl and you're sitting there with a 50 yard field goal or 52 yard field goal with two seconds left, and 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 Matt Michael Badgley runs out there, what is like? How are you guys feeling to win it? A tie. A, a, you're, you're down one, down one or two, and you're like. Are we gonna like what? Are, okay, now if you're going out there with the guy that has made those kicks and you've been able to trust and he's been in the and you're gonna feel a little bit more better. Like okay, we march down the field. It, it's just like I'm sitting there, put myself in a, a two minute uh, position here in, in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. as Alliance fans, and I'm and all I'm thinking in my head is Jared Goff, just get to the forty, just get to the forty, just get to the forty, get to the thirty seven, like whatever it is, just get there. We just need to get there and we can win this game. I right now it's go score a touchdown, go score a touchdown, and, and you're down two or one. You need to give yourself that like that safety blanket a little bit. I agree with you, but what it and, and John Fisher here? Factor. I'm just saying stuff with zero proof. I promise you, go look at the stats. Look at Michael Badgley 45 plus. Don't look at 40 to 49 because those are all under 45. Go look at these stats. There's a and reason I, I, Dan I, I, Campbell was going for it as many times as he was ahead. at that spot. No, what's up, Lucas? I was just say when you talk about the trust aspect, Booner, and especially to what you were saying at the end, I completely agree with. Like, if there's ways that you can maximize this team winning opportunity, you go and do it. But I just don't think there will ever be a kicker that Dan has more trust in, regardless of who it is, than this offensive line. I just think he has so much trust in this offensive line that it will always triumph any kicker. It could be Harrison Bucker, Justin Tucker, Adam Benatari, you name it. Jason Hansen. I don't care if you bring him out of retirement at 55, however old he is. He's better than Michael fucking Badgley. But I, I don't think there will ever be a kicker that triumphs how much he trusts this offense and Jared Goff. I just think he has the utmost trust, and he should. They're a top-five offense. And yeah. when you're talking about getting two or three yards, would you rather trust this offense and go with, go get a touchdown that could potentially win this game? And a field goal could too, but, again, there's nothing sh- like sure about a field goal ever. I, I just want to address this. Yes, I, I, there, he did kick a 50-yarder this year in the playoffs in the Rams, so I was wrong on that. But number two, guess what? Why didn't he do it versus the 49ers? Why didn't he do it all regular season when he had the chance and Dan had the chance to do that? One time all year he trusted him and he let him kick that field goal to go up by seven. Do you guys, do you like, does anyone see where I'm coming from here? Like I, one time? Th- why I didn't he do it for San Fran? Because I think that's what it is, is he trusts that that offense in that whole first half was going down the field, going down yeah. the field. And yeah. they were even having drives outside of that Gibbs, Gibbs fumble where they'd go down the field and they'd stall out. And I think each time it was because that offense was moving down the field and they're like, we're a touchdown away from putting this game away. We're one touchdown away. Now, did it end up biting them in the ass? Absolutely. But you talk got about, okay, now let's upgrade a, this offense. I got so, myself I think into a money badger offense. problem here. <laughs> The, the, the chat, I didn't realize Lions fans love the money badger this much. I had no clue. <laughs> no, this it's is, it's more this like is I, get, I, I get I get I get both sides. Like I get Lucas also, um, and you kind of said this too, Boone, where it's like I think Dan just trusts the hell out of that offensive line. And he trusts the he trusts yeah. their execution. He trusts Reynolds is gonna come down with the damn ball. And they want to take, they want to score touchdowns, like, and that's how they think they're gonna win games. I mean, I'm just – I'm asking – that's why I asked the question. If they improve their defense and get a kick, and get a, a, a more suitable kicker. Not that Badgley is is terrible, but, I mean, if you're going to sit here and say they shouldn't upgrade, I mean, I don't know what you're smoking. Uh, that's maybe you're where I'm like – Maybe you're with Dan Campbell, and, and all jokingly, though. But What are we all – what are these people, like, coming at me for? It? Like, why are we sticking yeah, up for Badgley I, I, like he's an all-pro kicker? <laughs> Let's no, go it's get just one. Not, he's Should good at he's he's dudes. fine. He's fine, but that's all. He's he a fine kicker. He literally was cut in training camp. Yeah, he, he's yeah, he's not a guy. Again, there's a reason why he's been on um, multiple teams. Like he's just yeah. he's fine, but they definitely need to upgrade. Um, want to get let's get the mailbag for that one. Um, let's let's uh, let's get to some mailbag with some questions. All right, first off, we'll start off with uh, acknowledging Lions fan syndicate. 
well, $1.99. Um, we appreciate the donation. And he says, any news on Sutton? Well, excuse me. We went, we talked about Sutton earlier in the show about 820. I think it was uh, basically mm -hmm. some Lions beat reporters. They called the Hillsborough County Sheriff's office, asked about Sutton, asked if they're concerned about his well-being. They, they basically said, well, our number one concern is finding him. It's not about his well-being. It's just about, uh, they're looking at it as he's not a victim. Like, is he okay? It's more of he's running from the law. That's how they look at it. Um, so there's no, like, you know, they're concerned about if he's alive or not. Again, I'm just telling you what they said. They're more like, no, the guy's on the run. That's how they view it, the sheriff's office, whether it's right or wrong. So um, they're still looking for him. And, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what what happens there. Um, thank you for the donation, though. We appreciate you. That guy up north, Millbag. Who are the top three cornerbacks in the draft, excluding Mitchell Arnold Kool-Aid? Wow. Um, Quinion, Terion, and Kool Aid, excluding them. I yeah, think you Kamari got Kamari Lasseter. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, think I Nate, Kamari. Nate Wiggins. Nate, yeah. I'm just yeah, kidding. No, yeah. Nate Wiggins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, dude, I, that, was, that was a that was a go at, at Lucas a little bit. I was just, he, I don't. Wiggins. I listen. I, I think when you look at the other one, I think TJ Tampa better. Kamari Lasseter better. And I think Chris Abram Drain will be better than Nate Wiggins. Chris Abram Drain, I think, will have a be on the field more. And I think he has his more solid skill set. You talked about like, yeah, Nate Wiggins is outside. He's not gonna be a good tackler. And really locking down receivers in the ACC. Okay, that's nice, but they're a completely different breed. You talk about NFL one wide receivers, and I think he's yeah. just gonna get bullied, especially like in man coverage. I do think he is going to get bullied, and that was his strength at Clemson. I'm going to do – I'll do – TJ Tampa's a, a one that's intriguing to me. I like – I liked, I'm liking – you got me more on TJ Tampa, Lucas. You've got me kind of – I'm big on Max Melton. Yeah, I, I'll hey, say Max mine. Okay, we'll, go, we'll, go, yeah. we'll go around. Give your give your three. I'll go uh, Nate Wiggins, Kamari Lasseter, and screw it, Max Melton. That's mine. Dude, Nate Wiggins, Kamari Lasseter, and TJ Tampa. What about you, fellas? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna go the same as Jeff. I, I think Nate Wiggins, Kamari Lassiter, and I like Max Mellon. I TJ Champa, yeah. I'd like too, but he would be in that list as well. I think those four are the next next tier. I would go TJ Tampa, Kamari Lassiter, and um Max Mellon. Okay. Uh we'll go on, we'll move on. Okay, Eduardo O'Neill, Millbag. What are your reasonable expectations for the Lions defense this this year? And are you prior, prioritizing scoring D over overall D? Yeah, the scoring defense thing is – I see that with like, oh, they have a top-five scoring defense. So just can, can we please just – points allowed or like yards allowed yeah, or, or is one thing they kind of get, let get away. But still, the points allowed were important because you know this offense is going to score 20, you know, 7 to 30 a game. So if you can – if you can, and they play better in the second half, but kind of how they were in the playoffs, the bend don't break, but this time actually getting turnovers – I, they have to be – let me just tell you this. They have to be a top 10 to 12 defense. That's my expectations. So I'm with you too there, Jeff. I, I think top 15, the expectation to make it a little bit realistic to where that, that 10 to 15 range, that's where you need to be. Uh, I think the scoring is the most important part because if you guys remember, like down the stretch when they started getting back on track, winning more games, um, playoffs, or, or just kind of yeah. throughout different times, it felt like they were – that bend don't break and they were – taking points off the board and they were getting turnovers and they were making those plays. And I think that's, what's more important is you can give up as many yards as you want, but if you can hold them under 20 something and, and this offense can go out there and, and get 24 plus or like last year, I think they averaged almost like 30 a game. If your offense is doing what that's like every year, the last two years, the defense just needs to just yeah. take scoring. Don't, defense don't let them put important. points on the board. And you need to yeah. be top 15 in that. You need to be top 15 in scoring defense and not yep. not allow a ton of points because that was the issue. Um, and, and if you look at stretches last year, like that big stretch where we lost a lot of football games, that was a big issue is, is yeah, you're giving up yards, but no, you're giving up a ton of points. And that's what you need yep. to, you need to uh, kind of take care of, in my opinion. And I think that just comes with um, more pass rush. I think that's what it comes with, to yep. be honest. The pass rush yep. helps that out a lot. I'm with you, and then the improved secondary, especially when you look at their schedule. Not only have the offenses in the NFC North stepped up, but you look at their schedule, the offenses that they play around the NFL this year compared to last season step up too. I believe they play San Francisco. They play Houston. They play a lot of good offenses, so they're going to give up a lot of yards, and I don't even think that's their fault. It's just they're playing really good offenses. So if they mitigate the drives that go from seven into three, 
I think that's what really matters to your guys' point. Gentry All speaking right. of something. Gentry, yeah, no, what are you looking at, Gentry? I got, I got March Madness on. <laughs> got the app just every game going. All right, Polar Bear, does JMO working out with Teddy Bridgewater mean anything for Hooker per Jeff Risden? Um, yeah, I I that's it's a good question. I know Teddy and JMO are really close, so I wouldn't look too much into it, but like when does end kind of you know, hey, hey boys, let's let's get a workout in. Let me let me let me yeah. let me get some reps. You know, I haven't that is really an interesting too. point. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I Hendon could just be doing stuff on his own too, like trying to refine everything, especially coming off that injury still. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure there will be times when he starts throwing. I'm not looking too deep into it. I but, bet you prediction, off season prediction. I bet you we see a picture with Jared Goff, Hendon Hooker, and all of the uh all of the receivers like in LA at some point. You know, like those those pictures you see sometimes of guys. That's that's my bold off season prediction. You see that like, Amon Ross St. Brown, J Mo. Maybe not Josh Reynolds, Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs. I bet you that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll move to the next one. Does Adam mailbag question up? Yeah, after we get to Mike Reed real quick, and then we'll get we'll get to that. Mike Reed mailbag. Are you guys as ready for the NFL draft as I am? I will be down there. I'm so pumped for it, Mike. Let's go, Mike. We're gonna come out with more information about bookies and what the plan is there. We're collabing with questionable T Scotty. Shout out to him. Um, Shout out legacy cannabis. I assume Shout there's out. more that needs to be ironed out. So nothing's official, but it is official. We'll be there. So get your, when the tickets come out, get your ticket, Mike. If you, if you want to come through open bar, food, tons of special guests, we'll be doing a live show. It'll be a lot of fun. So information on that will be coming uh, in the future, but uh, yeah, we're pumped for it, Mike. I mean, I can't, I can't freaking wait for it. We're, we're fired up. And then you got Adam Baydu, mailbag drafting Drake Mayboon or shame on you. He's, he's can, still can about you, can, First of all, I don't know if he's gone back and listened to the explanation. <laughs> Come on. Just just listen to, yeah. yeah. Am I the only one that would have drafted Jake, Drake Mayboon if I had that pick? Um, I don't hate it. No, I honestly Boone, I told you I would have done the same fucking thing. Yeah. So it can't be that bad. I would have done something different, but I'm not going to sit here and argue why what I would have done is right. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't hate yeah. it. This I, is I don't, Adam. I don't. Adam's thinking Robert Sala is not going to take a quarterback to push Aaron Rodgers out. But Booner, you are absolutely right. I, like I know the GM would probably change if Aaron Rodgers fails, but Aaron Rodgers, like let's say he gets hurt, like which is very possible. The man's coming off an Achilles injury. He's 40 plus years old. That you got Drake May now. You're going to tell me that's a bad situation for the Jets with Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. Like come on now, Mike Williams. Mm -hmm. Like that's a great defense. Come on. They can get offensive line in the second and third round. They don't need anything on defense. All right. Let's uh, let's get to Randy's question. Randy Mailbag, why do you think Brad wouldn't use next year's picks to move up? Uh, or why do you think Brad? Or wait. Yeah, because we agree. I think if Brad trades up, he's yeah. going to use next year's draft capital. So all of us would agree with that, Randy. And I, th I think he does trade up. We all kind of agree there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Run DMG. Uh, we got, Not to be confused with run BMG. Who's on the Back. on this panel? Uh, mailbag, yeah. trade up or trade down? What would you rather have Brad do? Well, we just answer that one. Trade up. Uh, we're with that a hundred percent. Mike, before we end the show here, we need an update on the bracket. Oh, yeah. What's going on with the people? I know I'm in like last fucking place, probably. Uh, am oh, I first? I'll be right there with you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still no. copied this one. It was bad, boys. It was bad. And did no, you want to see one? In uh, first place, we have Dante. And then oh, no. Benji the Not goat. Yeah, Dante's cool. in first place by ten points. He has Houston winning it all, which I think they won. Um, They're up 10 0 right now. And Benji. Oh, yeah, Man, Dante, uh, shout out to you, brother. Shout out. And Sheet. then Benji the Goat's right behind him. And then guess who's on top, which I don't know who that is. So we maybe have to get that. <laughs> That's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> Those two are tied for second, him and Benji. So Fuck yeah! I, well, shout out I'm not doing so hot. I'm in 46th place. So I don't know about you fellas. I I can talk real quick here. Barrel, I'm probably I really worse been able than to that. Watch that much March Madness either. I I can watch the games like at night, but like during the day, I I can't. Oh, Gentry, what's up, friend? What? what 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 place are you in? 46. Oh, I'm 46. I think you said 47. I was like, I'm 46, brother. No, I I, we're, yeah, tied. We're, tied. we're probably tied with a bunch of people. Well. I'm in 22nd place. No way. <laughs> yeah, you're right there, actually. You're 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 in the mix, Jeff. Oh, 
Hold on. My boy, Adam. You know I don't even think I ever changed my name. The leader has 20, 230 points. You have 190. You're you're right. You're right there, Jeff. You're in the I'm mix. On, I'm on his ass. Pause. Hey, I am, hey, I'm right Jesus there. Christ. I'm right there. Hey. We'll see. Uh, Spenmo wants to clear the thirteen. I'm going to clear this up. I just said that. All right, let me clear That's this crazy. up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me talk I'm to dialed. you for a sec, Spenny. Let me talk to you for a I, I get it. I get it. Let me talk to you for a sec. Spenny, are you by yourself? Let, let, me, let me talk to you for a sec. All right. Got to put the gin down though. Just set the gin right next to you. Let me let me talk to you. So this is this is what's brewery. going on. He's drinking a dripper. So last year in fantasy, I was hit with an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spenny, I couldn't refuse it. I couldn't Spenny. refuse it. I gave Braylon AJ Brown. It was a good trade. I mean, maybe it wasn't. Anything having to do with, uh, you know, oh. players. But it, it's it. – we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh. This is like a Jim Harbaugh, like the cheeseburger situation. Like, he he, he got me something. I gave him A.J. Brown. I would oh, say it's a bigger oh. situation than the Jim Harbaugh cheeseburger. I, hey, he gave me he gave me a little something on the side. I'm not going to say – you know, it is oh, what it is. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, it's, it's stop. I mean, say it. Cheese. You have to now because that sounds really – uh, uh, Yeah. You know, just it's either you say it or you don't. He he, he made the the pockets got a got a wee bit fatter. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, a little, a little there it is. There little it pockets is. got a little fatter. That's all I'm that saying. That even sounds bad yeah. too, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pockets. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, dude. I do not know how you how you consistently make everything sound so bad. So hey, Spenny, I'm sorry. Hey, you want to know who ended up? Uh, who ended up winning that league, even though there were some cheaters trading? Who? Who, Gentry? Me. You're probably <laughs> the only one that noticed. You're probably Don't need no cheating. Don't need no trades. Drafted. My team won it all. Well, Do you know who, who was the runner-up? Booner. We don't care, Booner. If you're we not have first, the dogs in this, this, this. No, I'm just saying this care. show. This we show right care. here. I'm trying to give the show. No. I'm just saying we have the best fantasy players on this show, boys. Okay, that's fair. That was, that was really good. Come I on, got boys. third. I think I got third or fourth. That was in the semis. Yo, th- hey, hold on. The coach Walk, this is just out of pocket. Whoa. Hey, coach, I mean, Walk. Said, coach, oh, not, coach I can right. explain. It was not that. It was not that. It's Spemmo. We love you, brother. Um, love you, Spenny. Love a ton. You, buddy. People uh, shout out, Booner. We. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, first loser. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Have, or not tomorrow. Have a great weekend. We'll have content Monday. scheduled. We have, we have all weekend content scheduled. It's out there. Be ready. Uh, ha- turn notification bell on because you'll get it. You'll be the first to get it, which is important. And we'll catch you back Monday for Mock Draft Monday. To everybody out there tuning in that supports us, we're happy. Thank you for 5,000. It means so much to us. It does. And we're so happy to be able to do this every night. Look at Lucas on the casting couch. We'll catch you guys later. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. Deuces. Peace. Love you guys.